at your instep is brought to you by Comic Town and BCW Supplies. Hello, and welcome to At Your End Step. Uh, my name is Morgan, and I'm here with Mike. Hello. And Dave. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just kidding. Dave has been fired, and uh, we brought back <laughs> we brought back an old favorite. <laughs> what can we do for episode 200? And it was go back to episode one. Yeah. That's uh, sound quality, not exactly. We could no. if you wanted us to. It is, <laughs> it is distinctly better. Uh, no, we have... The uh, returning founding member of At Your End Step, Jordan. Yeah, it's weird to be an emeritus uh, member of a show that's been around for only three years, but yeah, I guess I'll take it. I mean, it, it is what it is, but uh, we, we figured for episode 200, uh, we, we do something uh, a little bit special, a little bit different, and uh, have Jordan back on the show. Uh, and for uh, our, our old time listeners, uh, it'll be like old times, except uh, less cursing. Yeah, I was I, I was put on a restrictive order about the cursing, <laughs> and so I'm here to just have good, clean family fun for you to listen to with your family in the car. He'd only grimace a little bit upon some good, clean family fun. <laughs> yeah, I got my swearing out before it worked, before the recording, so we're good to go. Do you know what the best part about this is? What's that? Dave doesn't know you're on. You're right. This <laughs> Everyone else should tweet Dave as you're listening to this, because he has no idea. And that's the best part it's of this. It's going to be great. He'll listen back, because he does when he when he misses episodes, and he'll just be like, wait, what? Yeah, yeah like, you're finding out right along with Dave. So I, I hope the cold sweat starts, the slight panic. <laughs> No. <laughs> what year is it? <laughs> yeah, Dave, I'm l- currently laying on your couch in the home that I now own. It's, so I'm going to replace me with pictures of you with your family. <laughs> that, so. that would actually be the creepiest <laughs> and most funny. Like, oh, man, that would be hilarious. Just <laughs> – Yeah. <laughs> so like, is it funnier to have it like like perfectly photoshopped so they look legit or just like crude cutouts. Like crude so cutouts. Like I don't actually know yeah. which one's funnier. I think that's probably better. Okay. <laughs> yeah, just, just as crudely as I've been inserted like, this into this wasn't even episode. convincing. <laughs> eh, you know. And do I put like pictures of Abby on top of Dave's wife face on these pictures too? Like we've just assimilated? Or do I just, you know, like what's the, how, how deep you know, do I go? I, I, I just, I I just want to answer these questions. <laughs> I would just want your head on Dave's body. That's, that's, that's like the only <laughs> thing. Like fat chubby cheeks Can on Dave's. put your head on Dave's dog's body in the pictures? <laughs> I'll just take like the place of like any family member that isn't Dave or his wife, <laughs> like either children or like grandma, <laughs> like picture with the baby. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, <laughs> and not consistent. Like uh, in one picture of grandma, in the next picture I'm the baby, uh, and in the third picture I'm both of the animals. That's great. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, great. But if it is like any child photo, we have to use the child photo of Jordan that we we as a as a collective group have oh, seen. Oh no, I'll you have to put a link to that and show you. In the chat. Uh, I'm fine with it. That's that's hilarious. It's a good. It's a good picture. It's a good one. <laughs> It, it just it just you know proves that you had you had to grow into your head apparently. <laughs> yeah, my head has been the same size since birth. My mom likes to say so. Like, Poor my, woman. Yeah, yeah. My birthday's a gift for everyone because my parents put ridiculous. Oh, it's, of me. it's oh, the man. best. Great. Oh my gosh, uh, I've got to do so much work with those. It's really you know it should be a gift for for you you know but it's a gift for all of us. Yeah. Um, but we uh, have obviously missed a, a, a few weeks. Uh, it, it feels like it's been a while since we have uh, done a podcast, uh, but we wanted to make sure we did 200 uh, a bit right, and uh, we we thought of a no right, better, but just a bit, <laughs> just a bit right. We thought of uh, no better way than to have Jordan back on. Um, so we do have a couple community topics to go over, as well as the competitive segment. So uh, let's just jump right in. So first and foremost, we have the banned and restricted announcement, and to no one's surprise, nothing has changed, uh, which I think uh, we can probably collectively agree is a, a fairly good thing. Yeah, at the uh, national tournament, which we'll talk about in a little bit, one of the women in my draft bot started this conversation of what do you think needs banned and modern? What do you think needs unbanned? And it was really weird for eight Magic players to all just unanimously agree that things are fine. And modern is as healthy as it's been in years. Standard is at least an interesting format right now, being that it's still relatively early with Ixalan cards. And uh, vintage, no one cares about, so it's completely okay. <laughs> so I, I, I really like the no changes. The unbanning discussion they had is really interesting. I'll be kind of curious to see where they go after the next Pro Tour, but I really like what they're doing right now. Yeah, so uh, it, within the article, they, they kind of said... Uh, they really don't want to make any changes to modern uh, before the next pro tour happens, and they were very clear and direct about it, which means that people can be feel comfortable within the format and not have to worry about having to change their decks 
you know, before the, the Pro Tour, basically. Which can be, you know, if you're going to invest in a modern deck, and there have been times where you may have been burned, and they're kind of giving you this this window of safety, uh, which I think is good and allows people to really feel comfortable with in the format so it can, you know, develop and we actually have an interesting uh, modern Pro Tour, hopefully. Yeah, I, I like that, you know, as you sort of alluded to, we were going out of the way to make sure that people don't get into that weird anxiety that happens pre pro tour, and then we have to listen to all the the because you know, already have to we already have to listen to all the pros cry about how that to play it. But that's uh, the Schadenfreude is already at this point is part of the value. So it's true. Uh, but yeah. yeah, to say that like nope, we like where it's at. We're not going to change now or before the pro tour, and we'll probably unban. It, it's just like really refreshing. It's a lot of up, you know, straight up information and just like oh, like thanks. You give me a little like warm glass of milk, now I go to bed. <laughs> Sleep real nice. It also gives a sense of like puts players on notice too that hey, like if you see something busted happen at the Pro Tour or eight decks or say Death Shadow or whatever, don't go and buy these cards because again, when they're holding the right to ban and on ban after the Pro Tour, so it's as much as of a as a break as it is a warning to put you on notice as well, and that's super refreshing too. This is the best article Wizards has written about something in a, in a minute just given their perspective that yeah, they usually lack so uh, it's so weird it's almost like you know uh transparency is a good thing and it's the only thing one of the things that we've been asking for from wizards for i don't know uh years and then when they did it it feels great huh weird <laughs> i like being treated like an adult and a responsible consumer <laughs> yeah they knew Oh, well. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, that that's pretty cool. I think, you know, in regards to standard, standard's still pretty early. Um, and I, I don't think that they can really do uh, standard bans anymore for a little bit. If they do, uh, it's real bad. It's a real bad thing. <laughs> yeah, that's not that's not where we want to be, though. I will. No, I'm just <laughs> Well, so Search for Scans has been on, like, people's discussion list. Like, they're... they're Hashtag too early discussion lists, you know, um, about how busted that card is. If you play that on turn two as like the blue white or blue black player, you're playing a different game than the rest of your opponents. Uh, th- th- this is definitely true. I, I but it's still the kind of card that gets punished by like naturally by like ag- aggression, right? Right. Yeah. A so, two drop. Yeah. Um. I, I I heard people talking about like a tuned the aether. Yeah. And I'm like, really? That's, deep. That's like, that really? Uh, just to try and weaken energy a little bit. I'm like, guys. Let's. Talk. I I know that we're doing this because Watsi has like shown like oh yeah we'll just buy these things but I think hopefully those talks will die down as like Watsi's like no we really don't want to do this to standard again yeah yeah it it, it stinks that we still have like Kaladesh block is going to create some sort of some some decks that just don't aren't going to interact with new sets they're just not going to and and that's a that, that's an issue but at the end of the day like it's not that big of an issue we'll move forward we'll be strong for it that'll be okay well yeah. no bands what do you think is the pro tour deck to come out for, for Rivers of Ixalan. I mean, Rival, what? R- Rivers of Ixalan. That's it's the, Rivals. Ri- it? Is it Rivals or Rivers? I don't think it's Rivers of Ixalan. No, well, it's, whatever. <laughs> it's Rivals. Uh, well, those guys. Uh, I mean, what's the what's the good modern deck that could crush the Pro Tour? Or is it just like every modern modern tournament, like how people draw on their Swiss rounds? I mean, there's a lot of viable control decks, and there's also a really viable aggro deck. So... I don't really know. <laughs> like they could just all decide to like gentlemen's agreement to play blue at control mirrors, and that'll be real sad. Or they could all just like slam hazards at each other again. Oh, you, you, I'm talking about the modern. Oh, I'm modern. sorry. Without, I don't know why. I, don't know why since I was thinking standard. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Um, I don't know for modern. Modern's really wide open, which is good, right? You can play. You can kind of play what you want. Um, I will say this: Storm is as we look at the the open. Storm is really really good again. Uh, Opt has reinvigorated that that sort of archetype. And pros really like Storm. Papa Finkel. Yeah, Papa Finkel loves him some Storm. Yeah. yeah, Storm's good. A lot of a lot of people will play Storm. Yeah. And I, I, I got to tell you this. I, I know they say, they say no bannings. I, I do have to warn you that caveat where you said that they could go back and ban something. If Storm is the best deck in, in the format, they will do something. They have tried so hard to neuter that deck without just outright not letting you play it, but they may just not let you play it anymore. <laughs> So that is potentiality. They certainly, you know, that is uh, something they don't necessarily like you to. Uh, they don't necessarily like that to be the best thing that you can be doing. Non-interactive linear combo decks is is something that uh, they aren't a fan of. Um, regardless of you know what kind of rules they 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 so call have for for modern. So it is something they could uh, potentially try to prevent if it is the case but i don't know if it's you know always 100 percent the case um i know that it's definitely good and one of the best performing decks in the format but it always feels like there is something else that you can be doing to combat it so we'll uh, we'll have to see 
So, uh, next up, we did get the Star City Games uh, first half of 2018, uh, first bit of 2018 um, schedule. Uh, and... Uh, some interesting uh, stops, uh, especially for uh, for us in the uh, you know Midwest area. We definitely can get to a, a heck of a lot of these opens if we uh, so desired. Uh, but of course, you know, starting in December, there's going to be the the open uh, in Roanoke in conjunction with the uh, Invitational uh, that will uh, uh, be there, the Season Two Invitational. And uh, starting in January, Columbus is the first stop. Uh, it's going to be a modern open, uh, January sixth through seventh. Um, and then for us locally, the, or at least in the same state, we have a Cincinnati open in March, uh, which is a team constructed, uh, which is going to be awesome. Um, and then that's pretty much it for Ohio, but there, there are plenty of other destinations and stops here, uh, for you to, uh, sort of check out. And, um, we also got some of the awesome new playmats that are going to be going out for you if you participate in, uh, an open or a classic. So we have Hostage Taker, uh, being featured as the, standard playmat we have the uh, iconic masters uh artwork for oblivion stone for the modern uh oh, tournaments okay. okay and then we have the uh Emiket version of doomsday as the the doomsday one is 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 nice it's pretty it's, it's pretty nice. good for for the legacy events um and uh there are also some uh new IQ playmats. Now, these are something that, you know, may or may not be interesting, but uh, one thing I do want to note is it looks like the artwork for the tokens uh, that the players uh, get for when they win an Invitational are now going to be going on these playmats as well. Uh, so it's kind of more of an incentive to win an Invitational. Not only do you get a token, uh, you also get a playmat with your face on it. And who doesn't want both of those things? <laughs> so, uh... I as a below be average looking fat man, I don't want to I, I will be, those, yeah. yeah, I, I hey, gotta say, regard- I don't know why I as a player would be incentivized to want this as a prize. Me neither. Think about what you uh, do with no. the uh, box I, yeah. that you try to sell. Like, this isn't cool. No, I, I, it's cool for the person, but <laughs> I, I just, th- that, that's, the, that's the idea. <laughs> what a it's weird definitely cool prize for the person. to give out, though. I, it is I can't wrap my mind around this for one. the IQ playmat. I agree with you guys. But hey, if you want an invitational, you get your own playmat. That's pretty cool. I, you just like it to, like, <laughs> Hello, this is me. <laughs> like, I feel like now you got to like make the most like troll, like troll worthy token you possibly can. Like Centaur. I want to be a Centaur. You know what I mean? <laughs> just like because I want that on a play mat that you have to win. You're gonna try and refuse it. You're gonna tell the store, please. I I don't want Mike's face Start on the centaur. You're winning in the top eight. So you don't have to get this. Oh yeah, you're just like you're just like telling people like, oh no, you, you need to give me this win because of what I'm gonna do to the nation. <laughs> Is that bribery in reverse? I don't understand. It's a threat. Uh, or a promise? <laughs> it's a it's or probably a promise. A promise. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, it's really interesting. Like. I still have my Dylan Donegan tokens and feel weird about it. I can't imagine, like, it's the people that own the Kibler play mats. Why? Why yeah. do you own that? Yeah, that's like, because uh, they're fans. That's because Kibler is one, uh, one of the oldest beings ever to exist. Uh, it is actually one of the ancient old ones. Uh, he's the ego monster, uh, and he must be fed. It's true. He must be fed. <laughs> that's why he uh, switched over to Hearthstone, because there's just more ways to get fed that way. <laughs> mm. It's also more. Powerful dragons in the game. I guess it it's true. Sense. Dragons are, are definitely more relevant as, as in in this particular uh, uh, game than they are in Magic. There's only really one good dragon in Magic right now. Multiple good dragons in Hearthstone. Yeah, I yeah. understand strength in numbers. Um, um, good. No, I was just looking at this list of where events are, and I mean this probably doesn't apply to anyone but Columbus people. But Columbus people got a little shafted here. Like, there's two in Dallas. There's two in Baltimore. Um, looks like there's two in Minneapolis, and there's only one in Columbus. Which we is, get Cincinnati though too. Yeah, I, I mean we've always gotten two in Columbus and one in Cincinnati. We normally so get like, two a year. We okay, get two a I year. guess that's fair. I mean, getting Cincinnati, uh, saying Cincinnati's like Columbus is just slapping. The no, face no, no, that's here. not what I mean. I'm just being like distance. <laughs> no, I know, I know. It's we certainly can... not the same. Though I will say, they <laughs> Cincinnati got the better event. Oh, the team constructed event, yeah. absolutely. So. Absolutely, we get a we get a lousy modern open. With I'm a, just glad they're bringing tournaments back to Columbus, man. All right, yeah, oh, it's, it's, it's been a while. Yeah, the convention center is apparently going to be lit, so I'm really excited. Uh, that's great. I'd I, like yeah, to be I'm there. Finally, and they have been there. lit. They haven't not had power, <laughs> and it's actually been it's unlit. Been, <laughs> it's been, it's been very, very dark, unfortunately, full of tears. Uh, <laughs> we don't get a standard classic, which is interesting. Columbus is one of the few that doesn't actually have a standard classic. Um, 
so we're just modern, modern, and legacy. Well, it, so that was something they talked about. They're, they they saw a spike in attendance for the, their legacy classics and decided to mix more of them in, uh, which is a change from what they were doing before, which is they were essentially trying to make sure you only needed one deck. Um, right. You know what I mean? So uh, that I think that's interesting. And like Columbus getting legacy must mean that legacy numbers in Columbus before were good. Like that 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 is the correlation they seem to imply. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, that is interesting. Uh, the no good standard. And it, it's not, you know, I don't find it surprising that legacy numbers were good in Columbus. I feel like uh, we have a, a fairly interested and healthy legacy community. Um, and especially in Ohio in general, I, I feel like there's enough players to support it. So. I agree with that. Um, I think like the other thing to look at here is just you, you mentioned we get a lousy modern open. I got to tell you, but everybody's getting a lousy modern open. No, I, I meant the double modern with like no, no, that, lousy. that's yeah, fair. Yeah. But uh, they, once again, they're they're citing the numbers that tell us that modern is the most played format and the most viewed format. Um, and we're gonna see I can, you know people like all, all the legacy players who were like like our format's gone. Now they're looking at standard players like how's it feel. <laughs> um, and Wizards has to be looking at that too. You know what I mean? This is in response to not only modern being popular, but also standard being not good. That, that's why they made their last, you know, the last time this way. So um, some have argued that it, it makes more sense for Star City to do this anyways, because if you have a lot of standard GPs, then you can literally have players choosing between them. Like, oh well, standard's not my format. I'll go to the open, or sure. you know, which is which is fine. But it's got to be it's got to be tough for Wansi, who like obviously wants Star City to do well, but also is not actively helping them sell the new set as much. Yeah, it's also interesting from a business perspective of card singles. Like, the release open weekends have to be crazy in flux of just... Oh, yeah, absolutely. And so they're going to cut that out for modern. Now, obviously, like, they'll still sell modern cards. They'll still sell standard cards. Like, I pre-order cards from them every time. But what they do on release weekend is... A, it's interesting that they're making this decision because it's a big one. Oh, I mean, their standard events, uh, at least this last one, only coincided with release weekends. No, I know. So they think actually got to have their how they, they got to have they yeah. got to have their cake and eat it too by charging exorbitant prices for or exorbitant prices for singles, and then only playing standard that weekend, and then telling people who bought the singles from them that like we don't really care if you play again on our on our sort of series. <laughs> It's actually kind of gross. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if like if standard is fixed for the next year and a half or two years, whether we'll see a shift back towards the middle. I don't know if we will or not, just based on viewership numbers alone. But here's the crazy thing: how do you shift back if your viewership numbers are so intermittent for standard, anyways? Right. It's a self fulfilling prophecy. So I, I don't really, I don't really know. It's a good question. So. I, I mean, I, you just go with modern. Like it's the safest bet, and there's no reason to sway from that. Like. You can still get people, like Mike was saying, you can still get people when, when new sets come out, and that's where people are most excited about Standard. It's true. And then just go back to Modern, where people will be more interested consistently. Um, and, I mean, we've been champions of the People's Format, so I don't know. Like, we can't really, I can't really complain. We can't really complain. <laughs> I really enjoy that when we started calling it the People's Format, it was sort of like tongue-in-cheek, like, nah, really, wait, shout out to the rafters, you know what I mean? People's Format, but now it's like, nah, man. It, it truly really is. People's Format, it's, it feels good. I, yeah, I don't disagree. Don't disagree. Um, that's pretty much it for the community segments. Um, uh, if if this is something that interests you, the holiday card for uh, this year has been uh, released. I liked it. Uh, so it's an enchantment that allows you to sacrifice creatures that distribute their keywords to uh, your other creatures. Yeah, it's called some disassembly required. Get it? Because sometimes assembly is required for Christmas toys, but so no, this one is disassembly. Uh, take it apart. So hey. if uh, if you play these cards in your local like kitchen table matches or uh, in your commander uh, you know groups or anything like that, uh, this could be something that could be pretty uh, cool for for that in particular. Of course, it's silver bordered and going to be pretty hard to get a hold of. Uh, only a select few like people in stores get these, so uh, don't necessarily expect to see this everywhere. But these are you know cool things that they've done uh, for a while now, and uh, this one is is pretty nifty. Uh, and the flavor text is pretty funny too. <laughs> now that all they needed was a jolly happy soul. Jolly happy but you took soul. that you took that line that should bring you happiness and you made it real sad. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> um, I think that's it. Uh, oh, oh, and I guess the if you're a, a story person, the culmination of the Exelon story, the Exelon set story, was this this uh, Wednesday. So today was um, it good, Mike? You read um, no. Yeah, I, I don't think, think the story has been. I, I think the really song set has like set storyline has been pretty boring. I will say Jace's like Jace's like amnesia was nifty, and Jace like the I will, the Jace and Vraska relationship has been fun just because like Vraska was gonna kill him, but then Jace is like oh, like a, it's like a sad puppy. It's like what he is because he doesn't have his memories, and now they have become really good friends to the point that, like Vraska is like romantically interested in him, which 
I, I, I that it seems like that's not something they had to do, but they did. Uh, but now Jace is like going to get his memories back, and like she's very worried that like you know that that's going to cause turmoil in their relationship. So, so. this is like the sequel to Fifty First Dates. And that, well, that no, but it's like. It, honestly, what it felt like is like it felt like the most recent Indiana Jones movie, where they're all like running through the jungle, and there's like the monkeys helping them like swing through the trees, and then they get attacked by like ants. Like, <laughs> like it, it's that's that's what this has felt like. I didn't see that one, so uh, it, don't. Uh, yeah. Not worth it. <laughs> it. It's it's not as bad as people would have you believe. If you just like close your eyes whenever Shia LaBeouf's on screen. It, it feels a lot better. Would you say it's a lot like a story where Vraska and Jace follow? Yeah, yeah, yeah it really is. Um, because Jace like they try to like shoehorn Hotly in, and like the like the Murpho character, whatever I can't remember the legend's name, like, Tishana. Tishana is just insufferable, and they try to make a joke out of it, but it just it's just like yeah, this is it's happening. So I don't know. It's whatever. Yeah. Is it w- weird to have like? Did you like the Amonkhet hour? storyline i did actually is it weird to have it shift like downshift to be so poor no i, I mean it, it i wouldn't call it poor it definitely doesn't appeal to me the way that aim cat did but gotcha. it, it just feels like a bad part of the Cara- caribbean movie and mm-hmm. I, I made the joke before about how they've, they've made vraska into davy jones by just flipping the head upside down <laughs> uh it's not wrong so <laughs> <laughs> like they can't leave the plane davy jones was trapped uh in, on a ship he couldn't leave it like it's pretty similar, yeah. so well, I don't know. The Vraska J stuff has been okay, like them talking and, and Jace slowly re- figuring out what his what his powers are again has been interesting. Like they, they had moments where he learned what he could do again and again, but like they're just immediately going to give him all his memories back. So like, what does it matter? Yeah, that sucks. So that seems really uh, boring. I, I am interested to see what happens to Angrath though, because he see like there was a line that was kind of funny where he's been chasing. Uh, Hotly, ever since he figured out that she is a planeswalker, because he's apparently been trapped on this plane for a long time, and uh, like he like is like I, I he's like he's like yelling at her, and he's like I'm like you, we should do this together, and he's like uh, okay, she's like okay, let, that's fine, let's let's do that, and he's like and we'll kill everyone on our way, and she's like oh why does the murder monster like me? Like that's the exact <laughs> line, and it's kind of funny because because they've never seen a, a minotaur before. He's the only minotaur on the plane. Uh, okay. uh, so like, like, so she's like, "Oh, cool! The murder monster wants to like be friends with me." Yay! So that was kind of. She's funny. gonna bridge this cultural gap. It's <laughs> hilarious. Yeah, it's pretty good. So, uh, I still think that that character is from Dominaria. He that he's a Minotaur from Dominaria. Yeah, Angroth sounds a lot like another Minotaur we know pretty well. Yeah, Tongroth. He was on uh, the Weatherlight crew. Oh, thank yeah. you for. I had no uh, idea. Okay, the, this is before both of you have entered the fray. Yeah, technically, will. but I so. like to read old story bits. Yeah, one hundred percent. Don't so thanks for filling in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, that's pretty much everything for the the community segment. Um, uh, before we jump into competitive, we do want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Comic Town. Uh, they're going to be hosting their next championship series event on Saturday, October 28th. Uh, this is going to be a 2K cash event, and we'll qualify you for the upcoming championship uh, in December. So uh, if you're not qualified, this is like one of your last chances. Yeah, you're to running do out it. of chances. I, I managed to do it by the skin of my teeth the last time. Yeah. Uh, so, Jordan, you got to step up. Yeah, and I'll just say, like, if you haven't been to their new tournament center yet, it's actually really worth it. Uh, I hadn't been in a while, so if you're still just like, I haven't played the, the new store yet, go out and check it out. And uh, I'm going to try to top for this, apparently, with some standard deck. There you go. So, okay, I'll be there, probably. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, so, competitive. Uh, now, obviously, there has been a lot of events, uh, many, many events that have happened. And uh, we'll, we'll try to be, uh, you know succinct with our uh, discussion of them because there would be a lot of repeating ourselves if we weren't. Uh, but we do want to start with Worlds um, and uh, give a uh, congratulations to uh, Huey uh, Jensen uh, for uh, being our new world champion. Uh, he uh, defeated, uh, was it Javier Dominguez mm-hmm. in the finals? Um, and, you know, kind of taking the Peach Garden Oath uh, version of Team Rare Energy to the uh, top of the field, um, and uh, I, w- I would say this event was actually pretty, uh, pretty exciting and, and pretty interesting to watch. And it being held in uh, uh, Huey's hometown and him winning was like a huge, uh, like story payoff because uh, it had been something that they had talked about on the stream, and they had said that like Huey's parents were like it almost seems like it was like a frame job like like they like made it happen like they they'd done like paid off Javier Dominguez to like <laughs> like lose in the finals a good job like, you made it to the finals so 
here's here here's where we pay you money and you throw the fight. <laughs> you throw the fight. <laughs> when did Rich Hagon become very Brooklyn? <laughs> you, get, you, get, you get a you get a fall down in the third match. In the third, <laughs> yeah, and game so you, you can play games one and two could be real close. Game three though. You're going to have to take a tumble. <laughs> You're going to have to take a tumble. You're going to stumble a little bit on mana. Just a little bit. <laughs> we're in Boston, guys. That's not, that is not the geographic. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, man. I only got a few accents. See, Dave were here, he could do Chockies. it. Cockies? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You're going to go down like the socks, man. I don't know. Yeah, that was a bad one. Uh-huh. <laughs> but uh, needless to say, I, you know, uh, obviously we're joking with that. That didn't obviously happen. But uh, it was an awesome like sort of payoff. Uh, to 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 have this, and of course, you know, you already, you already have Reed and Owen there uh, as they are, you know, uh, other participants in this tournament, and uh, it it was just like the stars aligning, and uh, uh, this being uh, sort of the uh, the perfect ending to uh, to this event, um, and obviously that's. You know, uh, easy for us to say, you know, this, uh, he was like, uh, you know, one of our, our horses in the race, basically. So, uh, and it wasn't Reed Duke, sadly, but hey, Hugh Jensen's the next best thing. <laughs> um, but what do you guys want to talk about about this event? Uh, I do want to quickly mention, because I don't want to get into the specifics of it, but I do want to uh, give a shout out uh, to Team uh, Musashi that uh, won the Team Series. That's true as well. They, they had that on Sunday. And it was, they, they, the way they set that up was a little confusing, I think. Um, even the competitors said that the match structure was a little odd, having them play multiple formats and multiple matches. But uh, Genesis got out to a huge lead and then got crushed in like the second two ma- rounds of matches. So um, it was kind of cool to see that. I, I will say... I wonder if they'll do something different later because it felt like a footnote. Like there was no way that it didn't feel like a footnote compared to like the top four of the world championship. Like for me, like we, we tried to watch some of it. We watched Huey win in the finals and then it was like, oh, right, yeah, and the team thing was done too. Yeah, it really <laughs> felt like – so when I turned it on in the morning um, – because so, I, 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 I went over to Mike's house to watch PT stuff all day and when it or world stuff all day. When I got there, it felt really, really weird that like – or when I started anyway for the day. Sorry, I'll make the story, right? When I started for the day, it felt really weird that these eight guys were – six guys were just playing and I didn't know what it was for. And, it, oh, this is the thing that's the culmination of this big narrative they built all year. And it's just this like footnote – like you said footnote to – this bigger, it just felt really out of place. Yeah, I, I think if they want that to make it more compelling, and I understand that maybe it's hard to maybe do that, and I don't know where you put it, but putting it in the morning before the top four for the world champion, and then like, because like, who has talked about the team champion compared to the world champion? Like, no yeah, one. Until you said the name earlier, I didn't know who won. Right. Who like, was it again? Uh, it was Masashi. M- team Masashi. So. I want a PT draft bet, apparently. I picked them at the start of the year. Oh, there you go. So, there we go. <laughs> I, I mean, obviously, you have a lot of great players on that team, but it just like, I, and I, and I, admit, and I don't want to like, imply that like had Genesis wanted to be more, but like we you know, we were at nationals this weekend, and even the judges were like congratulating Huey, who was in attendance, and it felt like a big deal, but it, the team thing didn't. So maybe that's just a personal thing. Obviously, it's important to those who won and those who like you know were a part of it, but I, I think Watsy's got to try and do something else to shine a better light on that, as opposed to just saying like like world champion and also teams. <laughs> don't forget about the teams. Um, uh, as far as deck lists, I don't know how much we want to get into it, only because we see the evolution of this as we get into nationals a little bit. Um, we should point out that we really only had three archetypes. We had a ton of Ramen Up Red. Yep. We had uh, the breakout of blue-black control, uh, it, it literally to the point that we saw no blue-white approach, which was you know, the deck, you know, control deck du jour the week before. And then we had Teamer Energy. We did have a couple of different flavors of that, though. You had four-color with the Scarab God, which we've seen before. We've had traditional three-color. And then Peach Garden Oath, the Jensen version, the one, actually bordered into a control deck. Had uh, had things like Essence Scatter in the main and uh, Commit to Memory in the board. Had um, Glimmer of Genius and Supreme Will and Torrential Gear Hulks to go a little bit bigger. Yeah, this reminds you of, like, Teamer Tower. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Uh, only without the aforementioned tower. Team or tower of terror. <laughs> <laughs> this weekend only at Insert Amusement Park. I don't know. Um, and, it, and it was definitely uh, you, you saw it was certainly interesting. But overall, like the main deck just felt like it just it's just Team or Energy. I will say Essence Scatter was the big thing we took from this as being like something that more Team or Energy Energy decks really adapted yeah, this weekend. Essence Scatter is um, as people have come to <laughs> the like, best removal spell in the format. Uh, yeah, have just come to discover is like oh, it just takes care of all these troublesome permanents. It takes care of Scarab God, well creatures, right? Troublesome creatures. Scarab God, Scarab Hazard. God, Hazaret. Um, the these cards that are difficult to uh, get rid of uh, one for one. Pretty, oh, well, yeah, and much. if you look at Team Energy, I mean, you know, things like um, Rogue Refiner is a two for one. Um, 
you know, World of Virtuoso is easily a two for one. Um, Bristling Hydra is super hard to interact with yeah, on the board. Yeah, true as well. So Essence Scatter, both in the Control Decks and both in the Team Mirror, have sort of been the go-to way to deal with this. So, um, again, we don't have to really talk too much about this. Congratulations to Huey, but we're, we can move into Nationals and see if we want to look at more lists specifically for Standard, if that makes sense. Yeah. Since we, we do have the benefit of being able to go in, into the future. Into the future. Or back to the... F- no, no. No. We'll get sued again. No. Once again, returned from whence time naturally progresses. <laughs> da, da, da. Uh, so we were uh, in attendance uh, for for nationals um, since it was in uh, Richmond, Virginia, which is about a you know just under seven hours of a of a car ride. But if you stop anywhere, it's uh, just under seven. Excuse me, just under eight uh, hours in a car. Um, and uh, so we decided to um, okay. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, sure. It's eight hours. <laughs> uh, decided to make the, the trek, and uh, it was, I don't know, it was an interesting tournament. Uh, I know, Jordan, you had your, your kind of your qualms with it. You didn't necessarily feel like it felt, like, very it, it very special. Yeah, so when before the SEG Invitational moved to Roanoke, because that doesn't count because it's not great, um, but it felt special. It felt like this thing you qualified for that mattered, that was ran higher than their normal level event and that it felt like you mattered being there. Um, nationals, it really just kind of felt like we were in the back corner of this convention center and the tournament staff didn't really do a good job. It was understaffed from like a judging perspective where people were just like holding their hands up for minutes waiting for judge calls. Um, side event staff was very understaffed. It's almost like they expected a low turnout and – or expected, expected. I don't know what they expected. Yeah, I, I don't. And, I, I, and I don't maybe, know. They, maybe that's the answer: is they didn't know what to expect. You haven't had nationals in what seven years at this point, right. so who knows what to expect? Um, I agree with you. Like they had, let me say this: the judge staff that was there, were great. They did, and, and like yeah. they had, fl- they had level three floor judges. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, our, our regional coordinator was a floor judge. <laughs> you know, for for the Midwest was a floor yep. judge at this tournament. Like, you know, the the judges were quality, right? But it did feel like there was just. Not many judges there, which was odd. And I think I think if you want to point to anything that makes this event feel like what you're describing was both draft portions. Um, obviously, this was a larger draft than you have at a GP. The event overall was only about 700 people. Yes. Um, but all of those people get to draft twice if they want to. Whereas at a GP, you're not drafting until you have a couple hundred players. You know what I mean? Uh, what, maybe 300 max? Yeah, max. You know what I mean? uh, but... There maybe in this because it could have been because of how many people were drafting, how many judges they had, whatever. We didn't have any form of stamp product. We got like a special sleeve to put our cards in, but we opened just packs, which led to some really weird things. One, we had a fair amount of damage product issues where we had multiple tables who were being called over for whatever reason. Uh, I had to get a proxy at one point if I wanted to play a card, you know, just from our, our packs um, because that's what happens. You open a bunch of random magic packs. Um, so by not opening them and stamping them, we couldn't like get rid of that issue in the first place. Mm -hmm. We also, like, we sat down for day two, Jordan and I did, and a person across from us was like, yeah, a friend of mine got disqualified yesterday for having an extra card in a sealed pool. And we're like, yeah, yeah, that's going to (laughs) happen. But, like, at the same time, you're almost incentivized to try it. There's not the staffing was low. You're not getting very many deck checks. I mean, I went through the whole tournament and didn't get deck checked. Yeah, did you guys? Uh, I saw what they got on my left did. So, I'm, yeah. saying, I mean, I'm saying, like, me you, you, if you are a person who is inclined to cheat and you know that the judge staff just is too small to deck check enough, it might be worth it to try and run the gamble. You know what I mean? Your stuff isn't stamped. As long as you're not doing anything too crazy, like, well, I'll cast my third Carnage Tyrant. I was like, well, okay, I'm going to call it <laughs> now. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you're, it, it feels weird at Nationals to like, make it easy to cheat. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, stamp the product. Give me stamp product. Right. They, in, in their verification for how day two is protected from – because somebody straight up asked me, how do you make sure that somebody doesn't take a busted deck from day one and play it on day two? Well, the bag you carried around on day two had the number two on it, <laughs> so it was safe. And that was absurd to me. They were like, yeah, we have ways of verifying the second day's product. And I was like, okay, they stamped this one. That makes sense because they only had to stamp half as much. And then we get the second bag where I was like, well – I could, I, like, I'm a smart guy. I could have cheated and got away Absolutely. with it. Absolutely. Now, one thing I will say, that they, that with, as far as the structure of the tournament, as we looked at it, both draft one and two, the way they set the tables, like, the person you sat across from in deck reg and they reg your deck, I don't know if you paid attention, but you were playing next to that person pretty much every yep. round. So that person should know the contents of your pool. So, ostensibly, if you sat down and started playing some crazy thing and they were like, but that's not what I registered, right? But... 
if the implication is that it's going to be the your person, your the person on your right who's playing their own match is going to be the one who catches this. Like, yeah, they're the they're the arbiter oh, yeah. of the yeah. tournament yeah. to make then sure it's like, like that's how this should everyone's work. Like, keeping it clean <laughs> for a tournament of this prestige level. Do something to stamp the product. Right. The, yeah. The argument with that too is like when I registered my opponent's deck, he actually even asked me or my registered partner's deck. He was like, "Hey, what do you think about my deck?" I was like, "Honestly, man, I." Literally was just checking boxes. Right, all just checking boxes. I have no idea what colors are even playing. <laughs> like you know, and and I don't mean that to be rude. It's just like it's very unreasonable no, you, for me you, to be you expected. Had, you to have like, five yeah. minutes to register the cards and give it back to them and start building your own deck within your twenty minutes. Right, like it's not reasonable. So it was yeah. very underwhelming. Um, the break between the constructed and the limited portion on day one also felt really weird. Like the way that they set the room up and set the tournament up. So if you start with draft first, the pods are already done and built so that you don't have this hour break where they kick all of the players out of the front half of the room and then set pods up. Whereas like at a GP, they do it over the night. So like when you get there, your pods are You do have the second pod where they, the second draft where you have to stay out of a certain area. But generally a GP hall is a much bigger place and you're not actively telling like people who have just finished a match to get out of the area so they can do this. It was like literally picking up with my match slip and it's like, all right, you need to leave now. And it's like, Oh, I'm not. I'm not allowed to be here. Oh, okay. That, that's yeah. weird. I just played my match here, so <laughs> yeah. like, it yeah, felt really weird. So and I don't want to like. I don't want to sit here and like complain about this like too much. Like it was. It was not like it was poorly run overall. I don't think for compared to the judge staff, but there were some decisions that just don't make sense. No, and I'll say to to say something positive. I had a judge called Jared Silva. I think is his last name, and then Ricky Hayashi, and was was on the appeal, and it was easily the best judge call on both levels I've ever had. Like, Jared got the floor ruling wrong, and it was still just the best things that ever, anything's ever been explained to me. Ricky had the best appeal explained to me ever. So, like, the judges, like, really, that were there, busted it really hard. Yeah, sure. And, I, and you held a tournament up for 30 minutes. I don't feel bad about it. <laughs> the best part about it was I still died that same turn. <laughs> like, I thought that I had an approach to the second set on top of my deck, and I just didn't. Uh. So, but yeah, I mean, like, I don't know. Would I go back next year if it's in Richmond again? That's a good question. I don't know if I had a good enough of a time to go back. And this should be the event that I'm like, of course I'll travel for it every See, year. See, I, I feel like I'm definitely going back. The Invitational for SCG, I've said before, like, Roanoke doesn't really appeal to me, so I don't know if I would go back to that. But man, Nationals, is, Nationals is Nationals for me. Like, I don't know. the chance. To, the, the, there is no prize that can be replicated by another random tournament. And, and that's unfortunate because I know that probably means I'm incentivized to get taken advantage of. <laughs> Because <laughs> yeah, they can skim on staff. And yeah, skim on exactly. They did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, I will say this: I highly, I, depending on how they do it, because they had full coverage here this time. I highly doubt Card Titan gets it again, and that's not a knock against Card Titan specifically. But I don't know how National doesn't go back to just CFB events next yeah. year. Yeah, you know I, what I mean, so I completely I, agree with you that. Know what I mean, maybe they get to keep Eternal Mass or Eternal Weekend, maybe, which is this coming weekend. But well, we didn't yeah. even talk about Justin's thing. Oh yeah, like we had yeah we had you know, a, a, another friend of ours who was in our car. They lost his registration. And because we didn't get to this site early enough in the morning, which was also like a, it was a, um, it was a parking issue. Like we we got stuck in traffic yeah. for like twenty minutes. Um, they couldn't add him to the event, which is before the players meeting. Yeah, by the way. so they gave him a free like side event badge, but it wasn't. It was actually for just for challenges, and said, "Sorry, here's how we're gonna make it up to you." Yeah, and, and he, he, I mean, to be fair to Justin's point, he, he got value out of the weekend because I wanted to play standard. He's like, I drove eight hours to play. We spent last Sunday, the Sunday that, Ju- yeah, that Jordan yeah. alluded to, we literally got together, played a bunch of standard, drafted a bunch of times. Like, we we put the work in for this, and uh, he got he got crushed. Yeah, so it was that was pretty heartbreaking, and that's the thing that shouldn't happen in the national tournament. So, I mean, again, I'll probably go back because I'm a sucker, but I like to pretend <laughs> I won't, you know. Uh I, I don't want it to be in Richmond. I would like here's here's what I would like it, it for, to be in Columbus, for, like yes. it was supposed to be. Like to be in Gahanna, so I'm sorry. I know. I know a lot of we have listeners who live in, in Richmond. They've got mad at us before. It's just worse than we, we literally once again could not like you guys had a Foo Fighters conference. Their conference. Con- <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know they. Were, I don't know. Uh, that. Today's my paper on change. the Foo Fighters of 2017. Uh, uh, I didn't know <laughs> Dave Grohl was, you know, holding a symposium there, but oh, I guess you could call it that. Uh, but like the, by the next morning, it was what we're used to in Richmond, which is every trash can in the city was overflowing with garbage onto the street, and uh, it, that's it's just frustrating. A city's frustrating. I don't know why. Get clean. It's just gross. Get and clean, the, man. Get the, clean. Yeah, the, the three things we liked about Richmond were bad this time, yeah, and it was just true. like we were over a million on that city, so, but. But 
what I was going to say is I would like it to be somewhere um, maybe closer, maybe more central, uh, maybe uh, Nebraska, maybe somewhere central like, somewhere. Ohio. No, no, just like <laughs> I like that too. Like I, I'd like to go to a different destination that like if Nationals is going to be an incentive like for me to go and experience like take me to somewhere maybe I haven't been and obviously it's going to change for everyone across the the United States, but. I would like it to be somewhere different next time, and I hope that it is. Well, would you fly to Nationals? I would consider it. Okay, I, I would. Okay. I would consider it. If, if, if at that at that point in time, I would put the consideration. I, I'm kind of in the position where I'm already planning on like playing less Magic next year anyway. So if I could play less Magic throughout the year to make up for the extra cost of like getting a plane ticket and actually flying down or flying over, or flying wherever. Um, I think that is something that is is more of a a treat for me at that point. Sure, in time. like if it's in San Francisco, you look at it as a vacation. Yeah, exactly. Sitting around a hobby as opposed to like or, laboring in a car at three a.m. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the Monday after was death. Yeah, uh, it was not good. Is rough. Um, <laughs> um, quickly, like we none of us did very well. I will say, um, Jordan and Morgan did very well in the drafts. So congrats yeah. to both of you guys. I Thanks. went X one, and Jordan went undefeated. Um, yep. But. We didn't do well, and they both went undefeated in their drafts. So, <laughs> yeah, it's standard. If I went on, it, what I went one and X or whatever in yeah, standard. My, my five hundred standard record is should not be the level that we are hoping for. That's, yeah, that was right. that was it. Yeah, I don't. I, I, yeah, it was just uh, it was not a good weekend for for us picking and playing standard decks whatsoever. But uh, you you played Ramen Up Red. I did, and I played a little bit of a version that was a little bit different. And I wish you just had played a regular version. <laughs> yeah, that version won the Comic Town PPTQ. I don't know if you saw. I, that, that's Shout hilarious. Out to I don't know. Oh, McCamish won it? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. So, that's hilarious. Um, <laughs> Glory brings the man and everything. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> oh, good for him. Um, you still I, Morgan? <laughs> I would have I would have played something. I will really, like, on here. Blue Light approached top four this event. I didn't say I didn't suck, fam. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um uh, I missed uh or or either played a more traditional version or um, played more braids. I missed. I missed a braid. I missed ha- ha- having access to another like something that deals with a uh, long tusk cub and uh, like a gear hulk or something like that, or a uh, vehicle of some persuasion. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and and I, there are a lot of harvesters. Yes, there are there are a lot of harvesters, and there are a lot of uh, cubs. Um, long tusk cub is a pain, and um, I just always had like the tube damage spell when they already had two energy and I was like, well, I'm dead. I'm just dead. Like you, you are going to forever have that long tusk cub. Congratulations. <laughs> um, so that's what I, I felt like pretty consistently throughout the tournament. Anytime I played against any uh, energy deck. Um, and, uh, I, I just lost, I lost like some to, to some weird stuff. Uh, I played against a black red control deck that was playing, uh, imminent doom. Oh my gosh. Um, uh, and when you are playing a creature, based aggressive deck uh the black red kill all of your stuff deck is pretty good um but he was playing some wild stuff he's played a bunch of x spells so he could always I mean, he, consistently he trigger his him to doom <laughs> torment of hailfire he did play torment against of hailfire you. against me for six and i wasn't dead uh but he uh top deck uh top deck day shock to kill me uh instead of me top decking, decking literally anything in my deck to kill him <laughs> yeah he drew like hot fire at the end of the day. he didn't yeah, miss he really for like did. six turns in a game in a row that yeah. was still tilting because yeah <laughs> like, I, I, I have decisions. No, you don't. Do this or, or you're actually dead. <laughs> that um, was the greatest. But, yeah, that's not fun. It, it, was, it was rough. Uh, Sayer just didn't go my way. But I was um, – I'm not a, anyone who is a, uh, a limited aficionado. I'm usually pretty terrible at limited uh, or at the very least terrible at, like, sealed. But drafts, sometimes you know, I can hold my own. Uh, our, our, you know, continuous uh, cube drafting has helped me uh, uh, with that to, to some degree. And um, this format, uh, with everything that I read about it and heard about it, it definitely helped in determining, like, what you want to be doing within it. Um, and that definitely helped during the, the draft portion of it. For the draft sessions, we did we did do some drafts together, of course. But um, I didn't necessarily do as many drafts online as, like, Mike did. Or, didn't matter. Um, yeah, that's the other thing too about this draft format. I think like reading is probably just a lot better than like practicing because like you can just both. get train wrecked. Well, like, you got train wrecked a lot, Mike, in your drafts. Oh, and no, then, like, yeah, Morgan I, felt, just, like, I thought my crushes. second draft deck was one of the best draft decks I've drafted in this format. And just like mm-hmm. when you when you multiply five multiple times, you die. Morgan didn't do that. I know. I'm yeah. aware. <laughs> I'm hurting inside. Okay. <laughs> Um, Sorry, both, I didn't mean to no, both, uh, both my my draft decks that I, that I, I did were just aggressive decks. One was red white and one was uh, black white. Um, and the, they were solid decks. Did we draft the exact same decks both times? Uh, probably. Yeah, pretty similar. Red white draft one. Yeah. Oh yeah, same work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Pound the rock. Reading stuff. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I have to say, like, I don't think this format is at all deep, and you might get bored with it pretty quickly. Yeah, I'm done with it. Uh, but I don't, I don't need to play anymore. I wouldn't mind doing a few more drafts because I, I just like enjoy aggressive uh, draft formats. Um, and uh, this this one, I, I maybe it's because I just like won a lot, and that feels good. <laughs> and like that's that's fine. That's perfectly fine. I'm ex- willing to accept my. Uh, uh, ridiculous sort of feelings upon it, but I, I enjoyed the draft portions more than I enjoyed the standard portions this weekend, to be perfectly honest. So, um, but yeah, that, that was a uh, kind of our experience. I guess we should like talk about who won the actual tournament. Um, it was, uh, none other than, uh, Oliver Tomashko, uh, which is, uh, so, sort of an up and coming that boy for a second, <laughs> that boy, <laughs> Basically, uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, in the picture, he's like holding the plaque like a Yu Gi Oh trap card. <laughs> uh, geez. Uh, but uh, uh, he is uh, he, he's a bit of an, a known name. He is he is on the <laughs> he he's done he done well in the Star City Games circuit, and uh, we see him defeat Jerry Thompson in the finals. But of course, they both queue uh, for the national team, so they are going to be representing us along with Reed Duke. Um, Pretty solid team. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not but even. I've been burned before. I, I yeah, haven't we team all? Team of LSB and Kibler didn't take her down. I'm not <laughs> too optimistic. Listen, about this one. listen. Bonfire knows no knows no mercy. <laughs> <laughs> you can't control what the bonfire do. Don't get caught up in it. Uh, it's, you, you had uh, Tomashko was playing blue black control, which we saw you know, become uh, really popular last week. We've seen a couple cards really break out. Uh, you know, Search Rise Kanta, which you already mentioned, uh, which is disgusting uh but also he had the cool sideboard tech of glintsley siphoner and honestly when we were trying to theorycraft uh jordan's deck we were talking about like what kind of creatures could you put in the mirror to try and get that aggressive edge when the person boards out all of their fatal pushes and most of their um you have know, rascal's contempts um and the card that you had tried was um we talked about <laughs> or we were, we were talking about the one uh was that uh, Glorbound initiate was one we it. talked about we talked about cat like cat gods is too expensive for it Sort of a variety of white two drops, right? And uh, Glory Band Initiate is good in the black version. Uh, well, I'm uh, sorry, so Glintsley Siphoner. Glintsley Siphoner is good uh, in the black version. Yeah, Siphoner. you just you just watched. Um, if you watch the the semifinals match, and I'm trying to remember the the blue white player's name, and I apologize, I can look. Um, but you saw the blue white player had to keep set of the wreckages in in boarded games, and actually used it to to get to Glintsley Siphoners in game three. But he had to spend his turn to exile his opponent's creatures and give him two more lands, and then Tomashko was able to resolve yeah. Search for Kanta that turn. Yeah, and just he just like ran away with the game. Uh, it was uh, Peter Villarubia. Yes, like so, like you watched him like go up two lands. Uh, you watch his opponent have to keep bad cards in against him. He had already gotten to draw a card off of a card or two off the Glintsleaf Siphoner, like. It was it was really good tech for the weekend. In that so. match, drawing one card off of Glint Sleeve Siphoner and activating Search once is disgusting. I'm you sure you can't lose the game. You know what I mean? Like once once you once you're heading the Search race anyway, you can't lose. But just adding Glint Sleeve I mean, Siphoner is disgusting. Yeah, by literally getting to get those two lands off the set, the settle too, plus the Search, he's effectively up three lands as well. Like so, he can activate the Search without having to like not be able to hold up spells as easily. Like. Everything about that exchange was so bad for the blue-white player and really like shows you why those small changes really make it worth it. Um, and then if you look at Thompson's energy deck, it's, it's really, um, you know, he didn't, he, his only real innovation here is, um, is uh, Lifecrafter's Bestiary, but it did a lot of work for him and it mentioned specifically in the Tokens matchup, which is kind of rough for, uh, the, for energy. Uh, tokens was really, really popular. At our event, I, everywhere I looked, we saw tokens. Uh, yeah. The Noida, you know, either Abzan or Esper, and you said that on camera, literally, like Crash's best or Vichyari was able for him to just draw so many cards that he was able to keep counter magic and creature pressure, and that deck couldn't get a foothold. So it's cool to see you go back to that. Card. Yeah, and that's a that that's that's old school tech. That really that is. is that is from like the uh, you know older versions of Team Energy before we we even have Ixalan. And um, that that card has been something that has never like left my mind as potential like sideboard material, and uh, it's good to see like it show up here. Um, and it, you know, it's it's good to get some control uh, as well. I mean, at the beginning of like scrying one at the beginning of your upkeep for free, and then like being able to uh, 
you know, draw cards in the control mirror. That's exactly what it's and for. And it is a cast trigger, so like yeah, you get cast. to draw a you card always even if they, if they counter it. So I also really like his his number of spell pierce in the board. That's a card I've really liked in the sideboard, and he stays low to the ground. He you know, he's not porting cubs out in the mirror like some people are doing. You know, he he's he's staying low to the ground, keeping in those spell pierces and trying to stay tempo against a lot of decks. And uh, it, it was to his benefit, and I'm and I'm I'm really happy. He said it obviously a good year, but I'm glad that he's doing well. So. What do you think about no Chandra's in the 75? Yeah, you know, if you're going to go that at that tempo route where you're just going to go, you know, want to play spell pierces, and that makes total sense. Um, you saw, like, Seth Manfield played a version closer to what I played, which had Chandra's and also Carnage Tyrant. Mm-hmm. Like, and I, I can tell you, and I have cast a turn for Carnage Tyrant and against Blue Black, and let me tell you, Deese. Uh, <laughs> but at the same time, it can make your deck a little bit clunky and not draw the same way you want to every time. Like, I, if you look at this version, like... He even went with the second confiscation coup in the main. His his sixty is smooth as butter. Like it just wants to do the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Um. And like so, I, I think like it, it makes sense. John is obviously super powerful, but I, I think he just doesn't want to deal with it. Sure. So sure. I, I also like Deathcore Scavenger, and I think I wish I would have played that instead of the uh, Harvester Aether Harvester. I did because uh, Scavenger is something else you can also bring in against Blue Light Control and um, use it to. Um, if, if you draw it in the mid game, it's not as much of a threat as, as some of your other creatures. And if you get a, you know, a cash, you know, if you get a resolve trigger and like one attack trigger, you can start thinning out your graveyard so that the scarab god isn't is devastating when it does come down. Like if it's just a five five, you have to attack through a few times. But it's a five five that brings friends. That's where it's obviously yeah. Bad. That's where yeah. It'd be, so. That's where the problem starts. Um, but you know, from from really from what we we see from the, this tournament is sort of the uh, a bunch of decks that we kind of already knew about. Um, uh, for the most part, I mean, obviously the new kid on the block is, you know, absent tokens. And we see that with Drew Bates oh, list. Oh, 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 to- oh, oh, okay. So is it, we have what, four archetypes in the top eight? Uh, well, we also have Marty vehicles. We don't oh, have, we have five. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so tokens and then like the resurgence of Marty vehicles, like this new aggressive version of Marty vehicles are kind of the two like highlights from this, uh, uh, this top eight. Mm, oh, for the top eight. Okay, fair. Yeah, yeah, for the top eight. Um, but uh, the the tokens list is uh, an Abzan list, uh, merely splashing for Vraska because it's really, really good with Anointed Procession. Uh, when you get to double everything on that card, uh, whether it's double treasures when you uh, kill something or if it's uh, double pirates, uh, pretty pretty good, uh, pretty effective. Also, sometimes it just makes your opponent's life total one. Uh, when you have a bunch of tokens, hey, guess what? All your creatures become lethal. Uh, so that's pretty great. Uh, but uh, really, the the the, the uh, engine of this card is uh, going to be the hidden stockpile. Um, uh, that's how you pretty much can get the ball of rolling. Um, so you can be blue eye control as well, because like yeah, you just you just keep making one ones. <laughs> right, and like blue eye control is like terrible at like crowd control. Like, right. um, and you know I've seen going from this tournament going forward, there are people that have gone to using like uh, the, the one you had in your sideboard for the, the tournament. Uh, Rivers Rebuke. Yeah, Rivers Rebuke as being like a way to clear the board against tokens. It's like uh, when bouncing a bunch of tokens is basically the same as killing them all, uh, that, that sometimes it's just what you have to do. Yeah, but it's, it's, not, it's not just the tokens. You also get all their enchantments too. Right, you, you, exactly. You, you get so much mana plus on that card. So... Um, but uh, yeah, this is something that I, I feel like is, is is strong enough to continue showing up with you know with your standard tournaments uh, week in and week out. So. Especially since it, again, this is a, a deck that is good against the control decks. You know, especially the number of cards with these tokens. Again, uh, when inherently you're playing cards that just want to you know, get advantage out of you know being half cards, essentially it yeah. helps. And then this, these token decks are essentially immune to the Scarab God. Yeah, like they really are. Like the the blue black decks are not running enough targets for their own Scarab Gods to be very good. And you're running nothing, like unless you they get manage to steal like a sacred cat from you. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? You did it. Like I, you just you are fairly immune to that, and I think that's that's a big deal. As long as the blue black deck and as long as the scarab god is very very good, uh, you know this deck is going to at least have a chance. Yeah, and that that compounded with the fact that all the creatures playing in this deck also have like embalm. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like you're not even planning on them staying in the graveyard no, yeah, for very they, long. They run like five creatures, maybe yeah, six exactly. or seven if they have 
um, like Champion of Wits and uh, yeah, if you're talking about the, the, the Esper, Esper version, version or, or or the Scarab God itself, but again, yeah, it doesn't do you very any good to get another Scarab God, right? So. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I I do like this deck, uh, and uh, it, if if you really like taking around a lot of needless other pieces of cardboard that aren't your deck, uh, this is certainly the deck for you because it can get out of hand. <laughs> this this is the kind of deck that you play because you want to crash Magic Online. Uh, and not not just because Magic Online is kind of garbage, but because there's intent behind it. Um, but uh, it's uh, it can get out of hand uh, rather rather quickly. Uh, so if you like complicated board states, there you go. There's a standard deck for you. Um, and then the other uh, deck that that's kind of uh, newer on the block is Mardu Vehicles Redux Volume Two. Sans <laughs> the remix. <laughs> Sans Gideon. Uh, he's out. Uh, the new uh, uh, four mana uh, uh, hard to deal with permit you're casting is now Hazard of the Fervent. Um, and uh, this is more of a uh, low to the ground aggressive deck. You're really just playing a lot of creatures that are able to crew your Heart of Kirins. You're still playing four of those. Uh, but your creature suite is the thing that's kind of changing. You're no longer sort of relying on uh, your planeswalkers, their loyalty uh, to, to kind of pop, you know, pilot the, the ship, as it were. Um, but we see pretty much uh, every creature in the, uh, uh, in the deck can do so. Sands, like Inventor's Apprentice and Bomat Courier. But if they team up, uh, but yeah, but if they team up, team up, uh, <laughs> then pushes the pedals in the other one goes <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> you child are still a bunch of raccoons in a, <laughs> in a, in a <laughs> <laughs> uh, Everybody can see it's a raccoon, right? Like everybody is completely sure. No. Now, and you can also do the the time old you know trick of like making your Bomat core your pilot your eighth eighth of your harvester, so your harvester can pilot your your heart if you. If you really want to. That's what she's making machines, man. I don't Correct. Know. I'm not I understand. Yeah, you park your harvester on the heart of Kieran and then you take off. <laughs> this, is, this is a Voltron transformation sequence. Like, <laughs> that, uh, this that, reminds me a lot of like when Smuggler's Copter was uh, around yeah. still rest in peace. Like, you have the veteran motorist back, which is sweet. Like This is the Marty vehicles that I prefer. I think. This, this definitely feels more aggressive. Um, when it when it comes down to it, I feel like Marty Vehicles was an aggressive mid range deck, and this is like this um, is, this is an, an aggro deck. Yeah, I want to uh, beat you down as fast as possible. And, and Scrappy Scrounger seems pretty well positioned in the format to me. Yeah, you know, just uh, you know, especially with blue black, like oh, that's yeah, the that kind of card that card. deck. Just it's like oh, cool fatal push. You're like okay, go, I'm coming back. Yeah, it's yeah. like <laughs> hey, cool. Wait, waste your you know, your Vraska's contempt on this. Like I'm, then I'm going to yeah, kill you with my please, Hazard. Please play four mana. Yeah, to exactly. Get rid of all my cards. Like that's so. Yeah, this deck seems sweet. Um, um, and, and like, unlicensed disintegration is still very, very good. Man, that's just—it's a good card. You just got to figure out ways to to play it. And um, you know, this is this is probably one of the best ways to play it. I know that there's a, uh, a there is a red black aggressive deck, but I mean, it, you, if you're playing that, then you're almost already there to hear the, the, to this deck. I mean, you might as well give it a shot and try it. Did um, your red black control opponent play unlicensed disintegration against you? Um. Yes. Did he? They did have it. I know that. Okay. Did he ever get to bowl you? I don't think so. Okay. I I don't know what artifacts he would have. Maybe he did but. have it. I can't remember. But um, you know, what I, mean? I would assume it's just a three minute kill spell, right? That's a, yeah. yeah. This is interesting. I don't think that deck's worth talking about. I just oh no, not yeah, at all. Yeah, I just, we're <laughs> Mainly find because a uh, he like defeated me, and I'm petty. So. <laughs> <laughs> um. I should also mention that Sultai uh, Energy yeah. Top 8, which is a deck that was, after t- storming the open, was totally absent at Worlds. So Hostage Taker, still playable. Don't worry. It didn't suddenly become awful. But I will say this. It certainly wasn't as good as it was Week 1. And when you have when you have a control deck making up as, lar- a lot, as large of the format as you do, a card is, is real tough. Like, it feels great in these like creature-heavy matchups where you're getting value out of it. But man, when you're looking at like you know, t- turn four against your blue black opponent, you're like, well, my four drop is a two three that I hope I guess I'm taking my own creature with in case you kill it. Yeah. And I'd like to pressure you. That does not feel good. No. So House Taker seems to have taken a small hit this weekend. But, you know, still still a good card and uh it's so important to know that like obviously Worlds was a smaller metagame. This sure, is this sure, is more sure. of a big one, so like Maybe that's why we, we, we see it, but Teamer still seems to be the, if you want to play energy, like the uh, default sort of energy deck to to go to. But uh, I, I like that we're seeing like options and variations and like this, uh, this standard format is a little bit wider than people may have thought after Worlds. Uh, I know people are still trying to say like, 
uh, energy is like a menace and like it, it's it's really like the best thing you could be doing but i still think there's a lot of viable options um this format doesn't feel it doesn't feel bad you know what i mean no so it's been so easy to hate on standard for the past like year and a half that we've gotten used to like being very skeptical and we see result list there's five decks in this top eight like and, and a small find tournament. archetypes like people like people who have said like control has been playable it it Citrus Cantus is probably yeah. the best control card we've seen in years. Yeah. You've got your deck. And then people will say, well, there has to be a viable aggro deck. Ramen Up Red can just punch yep. you in the mouth. Yeah, so it's still viable. You, you, you just, get Midrange Jack, there's your teamer and your green black. And we still have fringe decks that are still here that like could always make an appearance. We still have a couple untapped combo decks that always pop up that we are not seeing right now. There are decks in the format that aren't showing their head that are still yeah. viable in existence. You can still play New Perspectives. You can still play uh, Reservoir. There's a token you can still strategy. play Tower yeah, if you want to. I mean, Jeskai, or not Jeskai, um, Godfro's Gift yeah. is still a deck in the format. So, yeah, this is a good standard format. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we have a couple cards that are a little oppressive, but we also look to, like, like right now, it's also the smallest standard will be. So, of course, powerful cards are going to make, their sel- they make themselves... No. Asserted, right. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, until you get more robust answers, that's just how it's going to be. But I have faith that we will get robust answers based on what we've seen printed now in Amiket and in Ixalan. So, can we talk about one more list in Nationals? Of course. You, do you know what I want to talk about? Not at all. Tenth place. No, boy, how do I find that? Uh, they, on the Nationals page, 9th to 16th. Oh, a- okay. uh, Adam... Uh, Bielkowski's red-white approach. Oh, yeah, the Sunbirds what? approach. Now, deck. I, now, I played... I. I don't know if you guys know this. <laughs> oh, you like I've red been white known decks. to play a red white deck in the do past. Do you like those colors? Um, I do. You remember the list I showed you when I was testing before the set came out? Yeah. This is I. This is that deck. If I had added Sunbirds of Vacation and Approach from the Second Sun, I tried really hard to play a red white Planeswalker deck using um, Vance's Blast and Cannons and a bunch of removal. I tried Oketra, like. So when I saw this list, I was like, oh, man, somebody's carrying the torch. <laughs> uh, but it is a really weird take on Approach from the Second Sun. But we see Sunbird's Invocation, which uh, is a six-mana red enchantment. This is the one where if you cast a spell from your hand, you reveal the top X cards of your library or X is that spell is converted to mana cost. And you may cast a card revealed this way with that same mana cost. And they literally wrote <laughs> they wrote a headline that was like, yes, this card works the way you think it does with Approach from the Second Sun, <laughs> which is you cast the first one. And they go, the trigger goes in the stack, and if you find another one of those seven, and then that one ca- yeah. you cast that one, when your first one resolves, it says... You gain the seven, put the back, and then you... Yeah. Well, but no, it, it's, it's already seen the first one. Oh, yeah, because the first one just says yes. cast. Yeah, yeah. you don't have so, to So, like, it. it literally goes, wait, we just cast one, right? We just, Okay, cool. Ding, we win the game. <laughs> you win the game. We did it. So... It's yeah, that's pretty awesome. nifty. That's awesome. Um, and I, I really tried. The only thing I had issues with in this color is it, these colors is that it doesn't have this deck does not have a good way to fight against like blue black. It doesn't have a good way to fight against counter magic. Um, but I really like what it's doing, and I like I just when I see Chandra's and like Gideon's hanging out together and Hawley in here too, it's just like oh, come in here, guys, get in here for this <laughs> hug. So, um, but yeah, I mean like. That, that that that's pretty good. It's unfortunate that you're just kind of like at the mercy of your your control po- opponent in a lot of uh, a lot of different ways, especially with things like if you're leading on planeswalkers. Well, there's you know Vraska's contempt. So I mean, enchantments are definitely the right way to go against them. You just yeah. have to ca- you resolve them. But you do have like to resolve them. Vance's blasted cannon is very good against the control decks, and obviously Sunbird's invocation. Just you know, essentially making it so every one of your larger spells has a chance of being two spells they have to interact with. That is the name of the game against control. But at the same time, like. Uh, I will say white gives you the best chance to deal with what blue black is doing though. Like Ixalan's binding is inc- like is incredible against that deck. I know uh, Jordan, we we had you play one just because mm-hmm. if you get their scarab god with it, you turn off so much of yep. their game plan, and they can't interact with that card. So I stranded three long toss cubs and a team opponent in. Uh, so that was sweet. Uh, <laughs> that there was you go. Sweet. <laughs> like and that's just a card that's super hard for you to deal with. Like right, ha- yeah. cast out's doing what you want it to do, but I, I think Ixalan's binding really you know showing you here it has a place. Um, Definitely. So, uh, I just want to mention that I don't think there's another deck I want to talk about for nationals. You know what's um, really annoying is that you catch the true on the Wizards webpage. If you hover over it, it's the stupid invocation. Oh, that's version. what they do, but yeah, like if you look at any Hazaret, it's also the invocation. Well, yeah, I can't read this. Why I can't uh. read this? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's talk about uh, Star City Game Charlotte. It was a uh, modern open, so that's what we're going to start off with. It was won by Paul uh, Muller uh, playing. None other than the aforementioned uh, Blue Red Gifts Storm, uh, defeating Joshua Smith uh, in the finals, uh, and he was piloting Affinity. Uh, so, kind of the uh, the you know big names in the in the format when we really talk about it, Affinity and Storm are kind of the two two most popular decks that we see time and time again. Um, 
finishing out the the top eight, we have another stiff, uh, another gifts storm deck. Uh, uh, we have Grixis Death Shadow, another Affinity list, a Green White Company list, a Green Red Ponza list, uh, and that deck can't win tournaments. I've I've heard that before. <laughs> it's uh, a feeling for Dave C. I'll <laughs> say it for him, I guess. <laughs> and a blue green uh, Merfolk list rounding out that deck's so sweet. Uh, rounding out the top eight. Uh, so uh, you know we we obviously have some repeats here, but we still have some like new fresh faces showing up, which is kind of interesting. Uh, the the blue green merfolk I think is the the most exciting one, uh, just for the the you know sheer fact that you know uh, Ixalan is bringing in uh, a bunch of new both merfolk and you know different colors to merfolk. Uh, I think that uh, what was said was this deck has more Ixalan cards than the entire Nationals top eight, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, which is uh, hilarious, obviously. Uh, but we see like Kumina Speaker as a four of just being a one mana two two a lot of the times. Uh, we have Burfolk Branch Walker uh, as being like a two mana what three two. Um, yeah, so like sometimes it's just um, the the other one that the, the draws a card. Yeah, Silver God. Yeah, and uh, the other times it's just you know a three two that when you have a Lord really hits really hard. Yeah, like. Uh, yeah, and I really like that list. And even like Kopala showing up as as uh, sort of the uh, replacement for um, Oh Kira. Yeah, uh, trying that out and seeing if that is actually the uh, uh, the correct way to go. But yes, yeah, this, this is sweet. And like you, you know, you don't see it here, but um, you know, this is a, a a deck that could look into trying to have like collect a company uh, in, into their uh, yeah, into the list at natural, some point the, in time. Like the natural progression for a deck um, like this. But uh, it's it's a cool take, and I'm, I'm glad to see people like trying it out and seeing if it's worth it. And I'm glad that there's success. I, I should point out this list isn't playing Cavernous Souls. Right. Because it's playing actual green, but it is playing Botanical Sanctum, which is a card that has uh, doubled in price in the last few weeks because of Teamer Energy. So if you want to play this deck and you don't have Botanical Sanctums or any of the fast lands from Kaladesh, you're, you're messing your window. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's closing um, uh, pretty swiftly. Um, Taylor Swiftly? Yeah, very Taylor Swiftly. Very right, good. Uh, overall, um, uh, let me. I want to take a look at the sort of the day two breakdown. Yeah, here. I was going to mention that. So did the actual uh, the number one day two no- deck by number was Eldrazi Tron, but it did not do well day two. If you look mm-hmm. at the top thirty two, one copy of Eldrazi Tron in the top thirty two, and it was in thirty first place. I wow. to mention that uh, Green Black Tron finished higher than it. Yes, so. yes, Jim Davis playing Jim playing it. So thanks, Papa. Um, <laughs> you actually have. T- Two versions of two copies of Green Red Ponds are doing better than Eldrazi Tron, which is the number one uh, most converting deck. And I think you know when you look at a deck like Storm, for example, that you know Eldrazi Tron is at that point is on um, you know Chalice or Bust, and you've seen some people start going to Trinisphere, which <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, <laughs> all, the, all all kinds of fun cards. Uh, but I think like you look at a deck like that and you see like how these spells decks and all of a sudden the colorless deck doesn't have a lot of options for interaction. It has to hope it has the right one. And you really see Eldrazi try and get punished. So I-, I think it's a cool progression of the format, even if that progression is Storm. Um, but I do think you see you know, decks like Griska's Death Shadow, if you look at the Day 2 metagame, while we have one of the top eight, uh, it actually was what? The one, two, three, four, five, sixth highest one oh, showing up at six. It's tied with Jund and Abzan. Uh, so you've seen Grixis Death Shadow come back to normal numbers, but if Storm is the is the uh, you know potential best deck, I think Grixis Death Shadow can come back. So I just like the, we have a real meta game. Look at all the decks you can play. If you look at that breakdown. Look at all the decks. You and by can the way, play. this happened without bannings. Like this is just the format doing its thing. Yeah. Remember when people were saying we should ban Death Shadow because it's oppressive? Well, I see two, two in the top thirty-two. Yeah. Uh, so people figured it out, and I like that Wizards was patient, um, and I like that, because, I mean, uh, yeah, this is just nice. It's just very nice. Yeah, so it's good stuff. Um, do you want to talk Classic too? Yeah, we can talk about the, the, the modern Classic. Uh, we see that uh, uh, Jessica Tempo was the uh, first place list, piloted by uh, Jacob Ballington. <laughs> Which is a great last yeah. name. Yeah, you wanted to bet that's a sweet last name. <laughs> that's, uh, that's pretty ballin'. Uh, not not, oh, not lying. Yeah, that the kid ball- had a great 2009 <laughs> to 2013. Although that kid had it. The kid was on fire. Oh, man, the Ballington's in his court. Let's just be honest. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> um, Ballington. <laughs> <laughs> he defeated Harlan Fear, uh, <laughs> piloting a, a he, Teamer aggro deck. Whoop, uh, whoop. <laughs> He's ICP now? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, perhaps. 
<laughs> uh, the membrane. Uh, and Harley Fury said that he like just brewed this deck up and like just wanted to to play it in the classic. And is like, oh, okay, I'll I'll take you know second place, whatever. Um, yeah, this deck reminds me of uh, when you had Team or Twin before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's pretty interesting. I, I Narnum Renegade next to like Huntmaster. I I guess I get it. I don't get it. And I mean, cryptic in this deck. Oh my gosh! I don't know what this is. <laughs> this is a guy that built a binder deck. Yeah, you know what I mean, like absolutely. He just grabbed a bunch of his friends, said, "Hey, what kind of teamer cards do you have?" And <laughs> built a binder deck, and it's awesome. Like, uh, you know, Harlan is uh, he's he's definitely a known quantity within the the, the Star City Games circuit. So it's not surprising to him have has success with a ham sandwich, and, <laughs> and uh, it's kind of what this deck looks like. But hey, it's playing Hot Master, so I ain't I ain't mad. Um, and yeah. then we do see a couple more uh, uh, storm lists. Uh, one piloted by Emma Handy in fourth place, um, and then uh, Titan Shift, uh, and Mardu, Jeskai Control, and then four color Sahili. Have you looked at this list? I have not, this, but I know that Sahili can uh, be a thing. There uh, are so many one ofs in this list. It whew. is un- like oh it is unbelievable. In one, in one court of calling. Like, yeah, it's an Elder Revolution deck. Oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> uh, that that's where okay that that's the card that's like doing overtime uh, for for this particular <laughs> list. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, this is uh, wild. Uh, this, I see a deck like this. I'm like, we've gone we've gone too far uh, in, in modern. <laughs> we asked if we could not. Or it's if like we should, sort of <laughs> it's like oh well, you're like just super kind of close to just like playing commander at that point in time with all these one ups. <laughs> yeah, like this deck can't do the same thing every game, right? Just by default, like it's just like, well, what do I got this time? <laughs> <laughs> I like to imagine that he was like going to register this battle of wits deck, but then couldn't find the actual battle of wits like before the tournament <laughs> started. So he just like, cuts. Yeah, so, yeah, he just like took the top half of his deck and put it in the side and was like, oh, this is what we got. Uh, this had to take up the whole deck card sheet, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, he has 14 individual cards in it, or 12 individual cards in his sideboard? Yeah. Yeah. That's too many. 12 actual cards in a sideboard. Like, <laughs> oh, man. So, like... That's wild. He, like, registered his deck and then, like, got Carpo Tunnel, so that's unfortunate. <laughs> Yeah, right. Like, I can't sh- just need you to shuffle. I just finished my deck card. Like, <laughs> I just, I can't. I just look at some of these one ups like Reflector Mage. Like, I guess when you absolutely positively have to have Mana War, you know what I mean? Like, I just, I don't, I don't get it. How, like, this, do you imagine that his opponents are constantly salty all day? Because he's like, yeah, that's the only one in the deck. <laughs> yeah, and that's every card. Yeah, just like, all oh, of them. Well, you just had to have, like, you know, P and Kieran Alar there. Yep, actually, I did. Yeah. It's weird. It was the only one. <laughs> <laughs> I would be yeah. like he had to be a, it was actually a real magician just like holding his hand on the top of his deck and summoning the card he needed <laughs> to the top I like, Sun Titan <laughs> ah like I, uh, I, can, I can definitely like understand like if you who's playing like a bunch of quarter callings like but I mean Elder Dread Revolution is a great you know tutor tutor card don't get me wrong but sometimes you just don't have like the right math to work out right I, I mean, I guess with this one... Don't talk do, about math with this deck. Do you think this is like the Pirate Stompy deck? Like He's just taking it to the second level. He's just like, man, I'm going to actually win this thing and troll a bunch of people in this no, well, these I'm, I'm fairly certain, like, he, he is just kind of relying on the, the heavy lifting of, like, Felder Guard and Saheeli Rai. Like, like that's that's just a combo that he can use to win and the game. See, I guess I, I played against a deck like this, not these exact numbers, but uh, the last modern event I played it in, and it took me... In, uh, what was it? It was always the Invitational. Um, and it took me... A while into the game, like into game one, because I thought I assumed he was um, the Kiki cord because of what he was playing, and then like he corded for a uh, for a Felidar Guardian. I was like, whoa! I was like, <laughs> hey, like it just totally shifted my whole mindset. So like, you can do a good job with this deck of hiding for a little while. Yeah, you know, just being like, okay, I know what combo I have to play around, and then you're like. That's not the combo I thought I was playing. <laughs> Courts for four, and you're like four, like okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm dead. No, oh that's, no, that's weird. Uh, you know, you're like you're like the person who boards it in. You're like cool, pithy needle on Kiki Jiki. Go ahead. And you're like cool, yeah, yeah. Sahili right? And you're like, mm. and you're at court for four, and you're like, well, I mean, like I guess like you get your restoration angel. Oh no, no, yeah, I'm dead. All right, good. Yeah, so, yeah. This this that's hilarious. This deck is crazy. It's it's literally fire lit. Take it. Oh hey, <laughs> um, but I I mean overall like. Uh, if you're going to a modern tournament anytime soon, prepare f- like if it's if it's big enough, um, you know definitely take a look at finding ways to, with your particular deck to combat um, a storm uh, to, to to some degree. Uh, there are plenty of ways that you can do it uh, if you decide to, to to go that down that pathway, or uh, you could join the dark side and just play it. Uh, so up to you. Can we talk uh, about how hilarious this Magus of the Moon is when the entire deck is all non basic lands? It's wonderful. 
He's just a madman. I am. Getting, there's an order button, right? <laughs> Buy from TCG Player. <laughs> All right, let's just put it on the old CC, baby. <laughs> <laughs> How much is it? I'm really curious. Uh, I have auto pay set up, so we're just gonna click out of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you uh, can Beyonce see it. calls you me like, "Why is it six hundred dollars?" I'd really like you to just under six hundred dollars. Like, I'd really like to hear that conversation with a significant other. Just be like, <laughs> yeah. So, oops, <laughs> like my phone just starts ringing from Abby. Like, why? Uh, why? Are I may or may not have spent uh, nearly six hundred dollars. So I need you cards. to call the bank and lie up and make a fraud. <laughs> like, like I, I didn't do it. it so you don't me. rent this month. I spent it instead on <laughs> magic, magic cards. cards that I have no intention of playing. <laughs> Weird. As a meme for a podcast, I'm not even on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that uh, that that is you know sort of uh, modern in a nutshell. Nothing too revolutionary, but hey, the the format still does look healthy. Um, let's quickly go over to the standard classic for, uh, Charlotte. Um, we do see that Esper Gift is, is victorious in the classic, uh, powered by Justin Gregory, uh, defeating, uh, Marsh, uh, Usuri, uh, playing, uh, Ramen Up Red. Um, and then we see Brendan DeCandio still showing up with Gift, uh, they're in third place. Um, uh, but, uh, um, we see a, uh, noble name in Frank Scarin in what fifth place playing team or energy, uh, member of, uh, metagame gurus. Um, and then, uh, there, re- there's red, black aggro piloted by, uh, Travis Bryant. This is sort of the, uh, deck that I was talking about. It's mainly a, uh, uh, it's actually a little bit different than the, what you might typically see. Uh, now that I take a look at it, uh, it is a more focus on red uh, than we, we've uh, typically seen from these sort of lists. They've been mainly focused on uh, black. Uh, but this, this list is playing uh, Lannery Storm uh, as well as Bone Picker. Uh, getting into the action, <laughs> getting into the fray, flying in, dealing some damage. Uh, but uh, this is a, a pretty interesting take on an aggressive deck, and, and you know uh, it's nice to see you get fourth place and, and kind of bring another uh, aggressive option to the the forefront. Um, we also have blue black control, uh, blue white control, uh, and another team or energy uh, list sort of make here the uh, the top eight. And uh, Marta Vehicle is just missing out on ninth. We have a mono, mono white monument deck in sixteenth place. Wow, that's uh, that's a blast from the past. Um, this one is playing. All of the vampire commons from Ixalan. Bishop a, a, Soldier, yeah. Legion Conquistador. I don't think uh, Paladin of the Bloodstained. Is uh, a standard stable? Did not think that that would make a, 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 a large standard tournament top 16. What if you cast it and it's a three for one? You get th- you get three guys for that for the three man. I mean, it's not bad. I, want, I mean, like, and if you're telling me this... for three mana is not bad? If, if <laughs> what world do you live in where that's just, like, yeah, medium? If you're, uh, I mean, like, uh, I live in a world where, like, Special Possession was, like, a card, uh, so that, that, yeah, that well, exists. Yeah, we're not in that, yeah, world, not in that world anymore. Not, this isn't 2012. Those, Obama's not president anymore. I need you to move on. One of those creatures is a 3-2, and the other, one of them has lifelink, and one of them has vigilance. It's a potpourri. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I think it'd still be all be better if they were just had flying. Uh, it's probably true. I, I will say, you know, there's some good things here. Uh, dust... <laughs> Dusted on it, it looks like it's pretty well positioned right now. The team redex, for example, like that card can be a little rough against certain board states. Um, and I think that Legion's Landing is one of those cards that like is really deceptively good against control. Like if you get to flip that card, then you can sort of just lean on that super hard. Um, so it looks like there's a lot of good there's a lot of good stuff here. Yeah, you get a bit of a different take than what Nationals kind of revealed to, like with Esper Gifts showing up a yeah, little bit. Yeah, absolutely. There's more blue white here than I think there was probably at Nationals. Um, it's, it's kind of cool just to see that standard is, you know, like wide open spaces. And by the way, if I auto bought Monu white, mono white monument, it may not trigger the, uh, fiance fraud alert. As is $64. Go. I would say <laughs> that if you wanted to buy this deck, uh, maybe not play the Paladin of the Bloodstain and maybe like play Oketra. It's another four drop that makes dudes like, I just think that's a better choice in my opinion. And it's not like a catcher is really breaking the bank either. Let's be real here. Right. I mean, yeah, you could fiddle around with both if you wanted to buy this one as opposed to the Abzan Tokens version. It's kind of doing. And this more. is definitely the, the the budget option as far as that goes. So. Yeah, but I mean, but it showed it showed at the classic that it can still that it can still do well. And if you like, you said if you're wanna, I mean, if you want to buy a Moto deck, it's twenty nine dollars on Magic. Yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, this is and, great to get into. And the with. Monument's still a good card. Like, yeah, look, it's it's a good card, and it. Yes, a braid is still a thing, but the control decks don't have an easiest time dealing with it. Blue white can cast it out. Blue black still can't interact with an artifact ever. Yeah, blue uh, black can not interact with a non planeswalker non land permanent. Basically, 
I'm just glad that uh, the the um, oh, what's the the, the Legion Kiki store is the uh, Squadron. Squadron, Hawk. yeah. yeah I'm yeah. just glad to see that that is is getting in there. Yeah, I mean, uh, seen some action. I, we, it was you and I were having this conversation, yeah. right? I still don't know how many three mana two twos I want, but I, again, if the first one just says draw three cards, you probably want it. Yeah, but if the first one says draw three three mana two twos, that, I mean, that, that's the discussion we had. Yeah. Uh, it, it's funny because I uh, tried to draft them in my black white deck after we had that conversation, and the other black white drafter at the table that I ended up playing in the finals was like, "Yeah, I just drafted all of them because I think they're insane," and they, they were immediate, like they were better than I thought they were going to be worse than he thought they were going to be. So, uh, cards yeah, interesting. If, if you're going to draft that deck, you you have to. This is a weird conversation, but in yeah. Ix, Ixalan, you have to have like a bunch of like like pirates, cutlasses, and stuff like that to just have a, a steady stream of things to do with your three mana two twos. In this right. deck, the 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 obviously you wouldn't be playing this card unless. You had a catcher's monument. Well, they make a guy yeah. in addition. Well, to because like you cast the first one, and like it, so, like if you cast like monument on turn three, and then on turn four you cast one of these, it costs two mana. You trigger and get more. You get a creature, and then you cast another one, yep. trigger and more. So your your next turn, you're literally putting four bodies onto the battlefield, and you've drawn three cards. You have two more creatures in your hand, like. Oh yeah, this card's as much of a draw engine for this deck, like a gas engine. Yeah, it especially is. when you look at like the mana base, like Chef at Dunes is a win condition, uh, you know, in this deck, it legitimately is. So that plays really well into that, uh, the, the the ability to just like swarm and pump. So don't forget the Chef at Dunes must be activated as a sorcery though. Don't, don't try to get that. a contact and blow your opponent. It's out. bad. Well, so. anything else about the open you want to talk about, Morgan? No, uh, I think it, it is uh, it, it is uh, you know a good showcase of some weird things you may not see all the time. So. Uh, but I think it's a good time to, to kind of move on to the uh, the wrap up here. So uh, before we do so, I want to give a shout out to, of course, BCW Supplies, our uh, other lovely sponsor of the show. Um, they are going to be bringing the team Metagame Gurus to uh, GameSwap Mason in Mason, Ohio, obviously, uh, for a uh, challenge a guru event so if you uh, defeat a team member of uh, metagame gurus you do get uh, a bcw uh, a pack of bcw uh, elite deck cards uh, again that's going to be uh, uh, game swap mason uh, so if you are going to be near the cincinnati open on friday uh, for fnm definitely go there to challenge a guru and again the, that is brought to you by bcw supplies i really do like getting the uh, metagame guru guys into uh, the stores uh, pre- uh, tournament during F and M to kind of have these fun events where they give away and and, and all that jazz and you know uh, and you're not getting like like you're not getting janky swag from them like you're getting no you're getting good products. stuff yeah for for sure so um, uh, it's awesome to uh, it's awesome to uh, <laughs> see them uh, come out and uh, do that and again so uh, thanks again to uh, BCW Supplies for sponsoring the show and uh, uh, having this awesome event um, also Game Swap is a sweet store I don't know if uh, you guys have ever been there or not I don't think I have. Uh, uh, played or, a couple of good modern events there. That they just have random five hundred dollar cash tournaments there, and like if you know Riley Kerr, and you can't not get the guy away from a cash tournament. So, we got a nice big store actually. It's kind of a comic town south. Nice. So. I'll keep that in mind. Worth checking out. Um, so this weekend, of course, we have Star City Games uh, Cincinnati, and I believe that Mike is trying to attend that, uh, but uh, is it's uncertain. It's possible. It's it is possible. A, is a potentiality. Uh, uh, it is my one-year wedding anniversary uh, tomorrow. And so you're definitely going. Definitely no, not going. Dave's not here. I keep forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Have you ever said that on the internet before? I don't know. <laughs> wow. Well, if this makes it past post, okay. <laughs> I think you need to lead it, you're a coward. Um, Savage. Anyway, I, I was going to actually go with you until news about the crew broke. Uh, now I'm involved in doing stuff with that. Yeah, if you, don't, if you are not Columbus uh, local and you're any amount of a soccer fan, there is a, sort of a, a tragedy a tragedy yeah, in our it, city. Yeah, it's actually preventing me from going to Cincinnati because I got out of pumpkin picking and uh, – but now my plans have been thwarted by uh, the yeah the uh, the owner of the crew is attempting to uh, relocate them. So. Yeah, it's a bigger uh, being, deal. And I have to say, it's as a Cleveland Browns fan, buddy, I feel for you. I really do. Yeah, and it's it, yeah, it's weird to have a bunch of non soccer fans care about it because uh, they've never cared before, and it's cool to get that. Anyway, this this would be like if Watsy uh, tried to move like the judge contract to Belgium. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I will say that's something we didn't talk about in the community. Oh, so no, it, it, back it, up it isn't. So uh, a little bit of tail end news. They did update that uh, contract as a, uh, a change, and it's now much better. Yeah, but if, you didn't, if you didn't hear about it, I mean, I guess that's the thing, too, is like... Uh, we, we talked about... Did you talk about it on the We talked about the better contract. Oh, okay, okay. That's cool. Yeah, it's really good that Channel Fireball listened, that they got their legal team to make a result. 
Um, and there's stuff like that's not easy to like because you know like my job background and right, it's not easy. It's not easy to make those changes in a week, and they did it. And it's good to see judges kind of sticking up for themselves, which is a thing they've needed to do for a while. It'll be interesting to see how comp works out. Well, I don't know if you saw Star City released uh, updated comp, and they are increasing comp by twenty five bucks minimum for each judge. But they are also trying to add more keystones. So like if you are coming in, like if you're the side events judge, like the head judge for that. You can get like your hotel paid for and get more money. Oh, so like cool. they're really incentivizing people to pursue leadership positions so that they can be become keystone judges for SCG and get paid more. Oh, that's great. So um, Hopefully it seems like ball bonus, ball. yeah, bonuses all around. Yeah, it seems like the market really worked itself out on this one. And Which I'm not nice. a component a proponent of capitalism. <laughs> Looking at nationals, I'm happy to say I hope that's true. Because yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, does anybody know about comp for nationals? Do you know if that was like... I don't know. I, we could. There's people we could reach out to. Yeah, I wonder if that was an issue. I, yeah. You know? Well, again, if you have... Again, our, our regional coordinator was a floor judge. And you're not paying that guy the same rate you're paying an L1 to be a floor judge. So maybe it was right. they, maybe they only wanted like L2s. I, I don't know enough of them personally, but I know that like obviously Ricky's a three... RC yeah. is a three, um, Silva a two or a three. I think a two, right? I'm not sure. Now nowadays he might be a three, but with Ricky, like Ricky's not also not getting the same. Ricky's also well, no, no, but he's the head RC. judge. But I'm saying when you have like we have twos and threes as your floor judges, maybe they wanted only twos as a floor judge for this. Sure, sure. Uh, which should, in theory, speak to the um, the level of the event, but you end up having. Charlotte so. also being like close for a lot of the Midwest. That's too. also true. Charlotte's closer for us yeah, that, than it is awkward for, for them that they ended up being. Uh, I mean, when you say close, like yes, different states, but actively really close. Like for Richmond, that's like the South still. So, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, cool. Sorry, we went back to the community for a no, second. No, it's fine. Did you uh, run through the show again, or are we? No, no, okay. we, no. Yeah, so there was a banner restriction announcement. <laughs> no, uh, we're not doing that. Nothing got banned. No, we talked enough for tonight. This is the song that. Uh, and we also have that. Eternal Weekend okay. uh, over over the weekend. So if uh, if you are you know legacy uh, aficionado or if you're a vintage uh, aficionado, then that's where you're going to be uh, for the weekend for sure to play your power nine cards that are more than <laughs> so weird. your power nine <laughs> <laughs> so cards of magic the uh, gathering your, your power nine cards that could like literally buy and you know you could sell and like buy a new car or a new house I I'm know. wrong hey, don't tell people how they could, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah I mean honestly like I almost bought a Mox Pearl once just like cuz and it was a waste of money then it'd be a waste of money now <laughs> go buy a car man <laughs> But uh, so uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll inform you of what happens over the weekend there. But we really don't care that much. I am curious to see what happens to the Minter decks. I I like to play. I like Monastery Minter a lot, and I liked that deck in Vintage. So its restrictions very interesting to me, and see how like the Vintage community response to this like yeah. restriction of a hugely gross powerful card. I mean, I'm interested to see. Like, this is the first. The, you know, this is one of the the only times we really get to see like. A a realistic like interpretation of like the, what the paper meta game looks like for vintage, uh, and how similar it is to like the Magic Online meta. Uh, if there's any differences there due to like pricing or anything like that, who knows? Uh, so we'll see what we we see from that um, when we get you know, sort of deck lists and stuff like that. So. Uh, but that's everything for this week. Uh, before we let you go, definitely want to give you some ways to contact us if you need. So we do have a, a Twitter, which is just your end step. And when you add us, it's at your end step because we're clever. Uh, we also have Facebook. It's just facebook.com slash at your end step. Or uh, you can reach out to us via email at your end step at gmail.com. Uh, if you're downloading us uh, from iTunes, please feel free to rate us and give us a review. Definitely helps with visibility. Um, also, uh, if you're downloading us from MTG Cast, don't forget to check out some of the other shows that are available through that lovely service. Uh, definitely plenty of magic stuff that uh, is talked about and that you can get into um, uh, next week I'm leaving to go to Florida for a play, wedding yeah. yeah and I do know when I'll be back again though uh, so uh, I believe we're going to have to skip next week uh, unless I want to yeah, I've go, done it once before go insane I still have boss boss jock jack <laughs> Boss, boss, Jack. Well, I literally have no idea what you're saying. Oh, and it's on my phone. I, I downloaded the thing that allows me to do this. Oh, boy. Because I, I did this before, but I, I think I saw it to send it to you. Boss, Jock. Yeah, I did yeah, it. Yeah. I could do it. Uh, so uh, if there is a show, I won't be in charge of it. And I, I mean. Oh, so it may be an uh, expletive show. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll. Uh, we'll Jordan, we'll, you want to come back again next week? <laughs> we'll, just, we'll just go in a circle. circle. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, who knew that October was going to be a weird month for us? Yeah, it was uh, well, I knew it was going to be a weird month because it's spooky. It is spooky. <laughs> hey, uh, don't forget Patreon. 
Oh, of if course. You, if you would, you know, if you like what we do and and you know we give you enjoyment consistently, and you think like, hey, I should let them know in a way that is actually financial, then cool. If not, it's totally fine too. But if you want to, we're there. Yeah, and you get some sweet bonuses for, uh, slash for joining our lovely. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, more swag. Also, we've been giving away these giveaways, and yeah. definitely people we've been giving away giveaways. Giving away giveaways, not the actual actual prizes, but just the giveaways themselves. Yes, correct. Uh, sorry, that's poor word or poorly, but you do get more entries into those as well. So yeah, if you want. depending on uh, what level you d- decide to contribute on. Yeah, so um, if you want some of that BCW swag. Yeah, and you've been frustrated by how you haven't gotten it. Well, guess what? It. There's a way to do it. To be fair, I'm, I'm saying you should. <laughs> pay the patreon so you have more chances to win it you could just buy it but don't do that that's not fun you're a gambler i know you <laughs> i know i know you <laughs> yeah, your would also make to make clear this is not a lottery and this is not gambling so <laughs> also true <laughs> correct thank, thank you <laughs> thank you our lawyer <laughs> nope not a lawyer either so it was just, it was just uh... no that's your nickname you're our lawyer <laughs> save the crew.com <laughs> <laughs> shout out go there <laughs> Go there and tweet hashtag save the crew. Please. Guys, I get to do that because this is, because I hate you. Uh, anything else you wanna you wanna pimp today? Uh no, the only thing I really care about is save the crew dot com. Right, so enough. go there and tweet hashtag save the crew. So Cool. Well that's everything for this week. Uh, we, uh, thank you, uh, everyone for their support for these first two hundred episodes of At Your End Step. And uh Hopefully there'll be more. <laughs> now, quick question. Feel free to add this out if you hate it, but I thought it'd be fun if we talked about our favorite 200 episode thing from At Your Red Step. I thought it'd be fun if we talked about our favorite moment from At Your Red Step, either in the past or like anything. Um, there's been a, 200 is a lot of things. And Catherine is bringing Yeah, food? make this quick because she oh, just put brownies man. down in front so, of me. Yeah, and you can't talk and eat brownies at the same time. Episodes. Yeah, see? so We got 200 episode brownies. Yeah, 200 oh, episode man. brownies. So, yeah, let's, thank I you, mean, Catherine. Thank you so much, Catherine. So, yeah, like, sh- share your favorite at your Insta moment. 200 episodes is, this felt like a normal show, and besides me, and then the fact that it's 200. Yeah, we, we talked a lot about, like, what we could do, like, special, and I, I don't I don't know. I don't know if that's. What's your favorite memory? That's uh, it. That's of the, the podcast? Yeah, Fair favorite enough. podcast memory. That's the whole, that's the whole gambit. Uh, I really like uh, the the uh, terrible shows that we would do on the road. Uh, <laughs> those are uh, were always fun, but they've always been such a challenge because there's so much uh, outside noise. Uh, and as the person that does all the re- recording and editing, it is very hard to like negate that in any way, shape, or form. And I haven't found a way. And they're always garbage, but they're they're some of my favorites um, because we have like. Uh, typically, we have people that aren't used to being on the show, or have like that—that that, that is their only appearance on the show. Um, but that you know, we we get interesting voices, and um, it's just uh, it's just fun, and probably like mildly unsafe. But the person that is in charge of the recording has never been driving, so it's it's perfectly fine. Uh, but th- those are those have been some of my my favorite episodes and the favorite things that we've, we've attempted to do on the show. Uh, my favorite thing is when we go off on tangents. Yeah. I, I I like talking about magic, but I also really enjoy just like making stupid jokes for extended amounts of time. One of my favorite things to do with my family, with my dad, and my brother, is you get on like just a, on a joke and like a pun, and then you just spend the next hour, all of you, just like even if you're like whispering to each other, like know this, <laughs> like, <laughs> and um, I like those tangents. Like those those are times that this feels like really fun. Like you know sometimes it's just like all right, we got a cast, we're gonna deliver these news, you know, this news, and it can feel sort of like we this is just like a pattern, right? Mm. But it's really fun to sit here and do this and laugh and then like get feedback from people who say like this, like you, like the last few events we've gone to and we've gotten to you know, meet some people or even the last day at nationals where we got to meet up and we played some love letter with Billy from Philly. And yeah, yeah. that's always um, great. But just like, you know, some people like have been actually told that like, Hey, like, like you really make me laugh. And it's like, I don't know how to re- respond to that other than say like thank you like yeah it makes me feel good so yeah. it's it's cool yeah compliments yeah. and validation though like feel great as well they like, do it some, really does those like, are some of nice. my favorite things I mean I'm not gonna I'm not gonna deny it uh, but. Um, uh, I definitely, uh, I, I feel like I also enjoy just the, uh, the all the behind the scenes stuff that no one else probably cares about. But I enjoy, like, I enjoy all the things that you'll never see. I, I enjoy, <laughs> thanks like, for listening. Uh, recording. I enjoy like all the equipment I get to use and like all the research that goes into that, which is something that is completely like inside baseball stuff. But um, that nerd, yeah, that's all right. That's fine. I am a nerd. Uh, but uh, I, I really do uh, enjoy some of those things, um, like. Uh, amateur audio engineering is uh, fun and entertaining, especially when your friends are really loud. 
<laughs> yeah, so you just turned the thing down oh, a yeah. little bit. Like, oh, yeah. Turn Mike's nerd I, thing down. This is, uh, this is obviously the first episode since Jordan's been on since we've had, like, uh, some of this stuff. Uh, and dang, Lord, J- dang, Jordan, you loud. <laughs> yeah, compared to Dave, who is, like, very yeah. soft-spoken. <laughs> Dave practically whispers. He talks, but, uh, like, but yeah. Man. Uh, Dave doesn't even apparently have any favorite memories because he couldn't bother to be. His know. favorite memory is he's making them in Hawaii right now. Well, like, he's better than us. Also, yeah, I remember the time Dave asked me if he could be on the podcast full time. We were in a Dunkin' Donuts or something because it's Dave, so, like, Dunkin' Donuts <laughs> on the way to some tournament. He was like, hey, so I've been on the podcast, like, twice. You think I can just, like, come on every time? And I'm like, yeah, I figured you'd ask eventually, I guess. <laughs> like... My favorite was losing the Josh McLean episode. Uh, by <laughs> Lyle, Lyle. Rest in peace. Oh, 100% sure I just didn't have a recording and I lied about the file corruption. Um, that's what I think now. I don't remember. Uh, Could have been. Who knows? Nice um, story. At the very yeah, least. exactly. So, um, uh, I, I, I would say, honestly, I've gotten to, I've really enjoyed post tournament success episodes. Like, yeah. Dave winning that, yeah. that P, PTQ was awesome. That was you cool. know, I, being able to come back and, like, discuss, like, you know, doing well at opens you know you getting your first open top eight jordan like yeah those are those are cool like those one, are, one day i'll have one of those episodes you have the equipment buddy so i, I do wouldn't do i wouldn't worry too much about you it. like it you just said you really yeah, like i it. do i really so, i really enjoy but it like I, I think like even just getting to we, we we've gone on so many shared experiences together and then we have a medium to discuss it and to celebrate both our our failures and our victories and um it's it's really cathartic like I look forward to this uh, when I have an emotional response to something I care about, and you can say, like, "Oh, well, it's magic and nerd." Like I know it is, but like, it's a hobby. I'm invested in. You know, you know, Jordan's over here trying to save the crew because that's that's what it is. Uh, you save know, crew is it <laughs> <laughs> ding. Um, I don't. That's a, It's it's nice to have that. So I I enjoy having our own little corner of the internet we can yell into. <laughs> It's uh, it's been very uh, very nice, and we've done it for uh, m- uh, most certainly many years now. And four now, right? Like it started when I was in my summer right after college. Yeah. So and you're still in college even after college. That's weird. <laughs> it's getting real. Expensive. You've been you've been you've been in college so long. I decided to go back to college. <laughs> so. Uh, um, but it's been it, it's been a heck of a lot of fun, and um, you know we uh, um. It definitely uh, wouldn't have uh, been here. It, it, this, it's kind of weird to say, but we definitely would have been here without each other uh, to some degree to motivate each other. Right. Uh, so you were having a hard time with those brownies, oh, man. buddy. He's trying it's so hot. hard to not be loud, too. <laughs> you, you, just, you just let it you go. You can just wait till we're done. It's yeah, really it's, fine. Just, it's you, fine. We literally just went, I didn't even hand <laughs> over, I should hand you a brownie. Shut well, up. Yeah, I'm fatter than you, I guess. I don't know. Um, eh. a tie. <laughs> I push. Yeah. No, but yeah, I mean, the friendship is definitely the best part of it. Like, our show chat that now includes, like, Brian, or has forever included Brian, I think, is, like, the greatest thing ever. And so all the listeners and then, like, you know, friends that do this is great. Like, I'm still involved in the show chat because, like, friends are what make this cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to, to be perfectly honest with, That's like, friends to, to be transparent, like, yeah, we, we want to have people that have differing opinions on things before we talk about them. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, it may be our little echo chamber, but I think we all have such div- diverse opinions in, in all honesty that uh, if something does come up within the magic community that we can at least see it from a bunch of different angles before we talk about it. Yeah, like, Morgan and I have never agreed on a thing. Oh, no, we, in, like, we constantly... We, we bicker sure. like uh, 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 old, uh, old married. We bicker no. like siblings. I feel yeah, exactly. Like. Yeah, we like, argue about just it really. to be like contrarian to each other to annoy each other to some degree. By the way, at three a.m. on the way back from Richmond after not sleeping all weekend is not the time to discuss technology. No, it was bad. Insurance. It was yeah. rough. Um, but this is a um, long-winded rant that Mike likes. So here we are. But um, in, in all I mean, honesty, around, like I mean, uh, the the amount of like just internal feedback that we've gotten from each other when like making the show day in and day out, uh, at least week in and a week out, um, has definitely like made it what it is today. And whether you you like it or or, or hate it, uh, you know, if you hate it. Why are you listening? I, some people like to hate listening to this stuff, deep man. In the rant now. Like, <laughs> um, uh, whether you like it or hate it, it is something that we love doing, uh, and um, it's something that is a passion product of us. So even if we had one listener, one million listeners, you know, we would we, we would really be doing it this the same way that it's we've been doing one, it. But. It is most certainly <laughs> it is most certainly closer to one. So, yeah. uh, but uh, we we again, you know, appreciate everyone that does listen every week, and um, uh, we hope to continue to uh, produce uh, the same, if not better, caliber of work going forward. But uh, I'm going to uh, stop this podcast right now because <laughs> I am very tired and uh, we're all very tired. It is uh, 11, 17 yeah, uh, in the go. PM EST, EST on a Wednesday night.
night. Um, we all have to work and or go to uh, uh, a graduate school for uh, obscurity reasons. Uh, uh, Self-identity reasons, mostly. <laughs> so uh, we will uh, bid you adieu, and we'll catch you guys next time. Have a great one. Bye.